All right. Yep. So, hello everyone. I am May, and we will be doing Hollow Knight 107. percent We've got you for about three hours, so I'm gonna get underway, and then I'll explain a few things. Time starts when I click this here, so that will be in three, two, one, now. And I am joined on commentary by Jamie, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Jamie. I am, uh, here. <laughs> uh, so, 100... Sorry? Oh, I was just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, 107% is a very fun speedrun where we are going to uh, basically do pretty much all of the game, barring the end game boss rush area. Um, Hollow Knight has a total of 112% uh, to gather, um, however, 5% of that is from the end game area that takes about an hour to do, so we cut it out at the end of this run and instead just go straight to the uh, end boss. In addition, this run is all bosses, so we will be fighting every boss in the game, including one optional boss, Grey Prince Zert, um, who could theoretically be skipped. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, you just saw me fail a nail turnaround, um, so when your nail, which is our melee attack, this one, hits a wall, you get a little pushback, and it's ever so slightly faster than walking so if i were to time a nail right as i was turning around it would save like one or two frames as we like greeting every tiny bit of uh speed we can out of every room in this game yeah especially king's pass because we've done it literally thousands of times everyone is just extremely good at it just through sheer number of repetitions and people look for all the little time saves um but yeah as jamie mentioned we'll be killing all the bosses um so this run will start off looking a bit like an any percent run or a trending run and then um we just keep going and going and going. Um, a lot of our early focus will be on getting all of the skills and items we need to be able to move quickly and hit hard. And then after that, we start um, working our way area to area, basically, and collecting everything that is percent, which is kind of arbitrary in this game. So charms, skills, most bosses are all percent. Um, as is like dream nail and its upgrades but then some things aren't percent that you would probably think would be like dream bosses or charm notches but this is all bosses so we'll be fighting those dream bosses anyway but um we will be skipping uh, a couple of the charm notches and so, we're just making um... our way in oh, we're just making our way now to the Fireball ability, Vengeful Spirit. Um, you'll hear it commonly referred to as Fireball or VS. Um, in the top left of our screen, we have our Soul Meter. Um, so it's roughly, basically it's nine hits to fill it, and then it's three hits to cast or heal. And then to the right of that is our health, which is called Masks. Then below that is our Geo, which is the primary currency of this game. Yes, so uh, soul management is actually one of the most important uh, parts of this run because um, the nail actually does not that much damage when compared to spells. Uh, for comparison, one before you get Shaman Stone, which is the charm that increases your spell's damage, uh, Fireball does three times your nail's damage, um, and you can also queue it right after a nail hit to massively increase how quickly you are dealing out damage. So you'll see uh, us using spells as often as possible throughout the run. Yep, so just finishing up our first boss here, we intentionally damage tank in order to get um, a stagger off during the tantrum attack. 
and we're picking up the city crest here which we'll be using to access a area in about eight minutes Yes, yeah, so this is actually the intended progression. You may know of some skips about this game. Uh, it's particularly the shade skip from Salubra to Blue Lake. We actually don't do this in this run um, because that's only faster if you need to get to the right-hand side of the map very quickly. Um, however, because we need to go all over the map for all kinds of things, um, we're actually going to take the intended route into the City of Tears. Um, and uh, essentially the intended progression, I believe, just of the game. Yeah, yep. Um, and you'll notice that we have the game in not English. We actually have it in simplified Chinese just because it scrolls the quickest and there's the fewest characters. Um, English is actually the second slowest language in this game behind French, fun fact. Um, and it'll just say this a bunch of times throughout the run. Yes, yeah, so I think it's... How much is it in any percent, do you remember? I think it's 30 seconds? Uh, not in uh, any percent. 20. 20 in any yeah. percent. So yes, considering how much more of the game we're playing and how much more text we're going to have to read, it will say add up to a couple of minutes over the course of the run. Yep. And a lot of that time save will be at a certain NPC we'll be visiting three times throughout the run. Three, maybe Good four. Bonus time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those adult elder boulders there have a 50% chance to uh -huh. uh, spit a baby boulder at you. Um, they have four spell casts of health and will roll curl up if you try and go close to hit them with your nail. So. What we do is we walk in with full soul, and that gives us three of the four casts we need, but then we need one of those 50-50 um, baby boulders to um, get spit at us for the third cast. Yep, um, and you may have seen me open my inventory as I was falling down there. Um, so that's called an inventory drop, and on this patch of the game, they are physics frame perfect when you walk off a ledge, and they have the advantage of uncapping your fall speed and they also let you cancel the hard fall animation that you'd normally get when you fall a long distance. Um, so they're just used in a few places. Not as many as on patches where you can open inventory anywhere since they're much harder being frame perfect, but um, they're still worth it in a couple of places to go for. So coming up is going to be a fireball skip. Um, this is a trick where we use the knockback of the um, fireball cast ability um, to push the knight backwards a little bit. Um, this also prevent, uh, stops your downwards momentum, so you can actually get quite a bit of extra distance from a jump. Don't miss it now, I've explained it. Okay, since you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a potential second one here, but it does not save anywhere near as much time. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> that was a terrible turnaround, unfortunately. So yeah, they're quite tight, um, but getting the first one is what matters. We're going to encourage this guy to jump off the edge so we can pogo him up and that just cuts out a lot of the um, time loss that we would suffer for missing that normally. Yep. Now we have your favourite enemy. Yep. So these Moss Knights uh, have one nail hit and three fireballs of, it, of health. Um, there you saw May do what we call a double hit. So by... Um, basing the Moss Knight to jump backwards uh, right as she fired the fireball. She got the Moss Knight to um, still be inside the fireball's hitbox when it became active to damage again. Um, that does do full damage for both of the hits. So um, May only had to fire two fireballs to get the three hits of damage needed to uh, kill the Moss Knight there. 
Yep, and just then you saw we killed the Vengefly King. Um, we do that both for Geo and to free the NPC it had in its jaws, which is um, Zote. And so you'll be seeing him throughout the run a few times, just progressing his little quest line. And that's because he turns into an optional boss um, when you complete that quest line, which, since this is all bosses, we have to kill him. Here is Hornet. Um, she has excellent voice lines um, that make very good gold sounds, I, I do say. Um, <laughs> she is the first major hurdle in the game, but we, we get through her pretty easily. Um, we may be seeing her later, um, and by may I mean will. This is all bosses after all. Um, and uh, in her second encounter, she is a lot trickier. Much. <laughs> but um, hopefully it goes as well as that one did. Yeah. So we now have the dash ability, which is called Mothwing Cloak. And this is going to speed up our movement quite dramatically. Um, this is one of the most important skills, along with the ability we're going to get now. Yeah. So now we're heading into the Fungal Wastes for the second major mo movement item, which is the Mantis Claw, which allows us to cling to and jump off. Nice inventory drop there. Yep. That's one of the really good ones to get. Yes, so uh, that's the major um, time save from inventory drops, is the uncapped full speed. If you can hit it really quickly, you get a uh, much faster um, speed. So there you just saw a demonstration of the nail providing a tiny amount of knockback. We actually use it twice in that fall. Um, first time to avoid a platform it would otherwise get caught on and reset our full speed and then the second time to ensure we cross a little acid pool across to a ledge safely um it's a tiny boost but it just provides that last little bit we would need otherwise we would just barely not make it you also saw may sit at a bench there um that is because after this we're going to um quit out of the uh, what we're trying to do here is an explosion pogo. There you are. Uh, so um, on some patches of the game, uh, you can pogo the explosion um, hitbox and get some height off it. Um, however, in this version, we cannot pogo the explosion itself. However, right before the spore explodes, we can pogo it without it exploding, which we use there with a complex uh, setup to get us high enough to get just barely get enough height from that single pogo to um, get us up around that corner. And that saves about 30 seconds from running around. Yeah, so that's still worth going for, even if you miss it a couple of times. Obviously, ideally, we don't miss it at all, but um, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. And so we now have the Mantis Claw ability, which is our wall jump. And with these two core abilities of the dash and wall jump, um, we can now basically access like 95% of the map or something, um, depending on how determined you are. <laughs> Yes, I think in the randomizer, um, if you have dash and claw, you're basically done, theoretically. Yep. Would now be a good time for an update? Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. So just to catch everyone up quickly, we are, I mean, Somni, you may be going through the path of pain later. Uh, so let's see if uh, where we're at on this one. We're at $1,726 out of the 4000 we need. So uh, Somni, how do you feel about the path of pain? <laughs> I feel like I blinked and it went from about 800 to 1700 Um <laughs> I, it's flying, right? It's flying. <laughs> I enjoy the path of pain, but not with the 107 loadout. I think it's going to be quite interesting. <laughs> so, I mean, you you heard Somni chat. We absolutely have to do this. Uh, would you also like a nice, encouraging donation to quell your fears a little? Sure. 
Sure. So we have a $107 donation from Quacksilver who says, Insomnia, you are a downright inspiration as both a speedrunner and a human being, and I could not be happier that you are the face of Hollow Knight for this event. Here's a dollar to celebrate each and every wonderful percent of the speedrun, even Fluke Nest, just this once since it's a special occasion. Smiley face. P.S. I hear Silk Song releases one day sooner for every trans rights y'all put in chat. Thanks so much, Quacksilver. Thank you, Quack. So for those that don't know, Quack is a absolute pioneer of this game. Um, she is also just a lovely person um, and was initially going to be on commentary, but unfortunately she had some other stuff come up. But um, send plenty of her love her way. She is, yeah, absolutely incredible. So thank you for that, Quack. Yeah, we love Quack. Also pioneered the uh, meme run scene for this game uh, to the, frankly, disgusting number of categories we have nowadays. <laughs> um, there is too much to do um, if you want to try and run every category in this game. I think the last time I looked at the spreadsheet it had something like 50 categories on it? That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not to mention how out there some of them are getting. Yeah. You've heard of grass percent, now we get ready for breakable percent. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have spoken that into existence, actually. Um, <laughs> so, yep, yeah, okay, good. Um, there we're just facing the flying enemy over, called a Rava, because they occasionally say Rava. Um, that's the deep lore behind those characters, by the way. We 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 know. All We're the very final creative. Lore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that the Hunter's Journal calls it a Rava. That's I can't believe Team Cherry would <laughs> think so little about their character <laughs> naming. Um, and there we just spoke to an NPC called Lem. Uh, he is a excellent uh, shopkeeper um, because rather than. Uh, us having to spend money, he gives us money um, in exchange for trinkets that we can find around the map. Um, that is, in general, the fastest way to get money in this game. Um, with just the relics, you basically never have to go and farm money off enemies unless you lose a lot of money. Um, so we make good use of uh, Lem's wonderful shop. Yep, and the relics also are unique in that um, normally you lose your money on death and it gets put in your shade, which you can then go back and kill. Kind of like the bloodstain system in Dark Souls, um, because this game's just like Dark Souls. Um, <laughs> and relics are unique in that they don't go away on death, so you can um, use them as a safe way of keeping all your money until you're ready to cash out and buy something big. For anyone who somehow hasn't played this game yet, um, that's some pro tips. <laughs> Here comes a mini boss. Uh, is this one Norman? I think this one's yep. Norman. Norman um, one. Uh, oh yes, of course. Um, uh, this is a Soul Warrior. Um, there are two of them in the run, uh, both of which we will have to fight. Uh, not because they're bosses. Uh, well, they are. No, they're, they're bosses. They're in the Pantheons. Um, but because one of them is locking an ability we'll need to pick up later. And now you saw an elevator squeeze. Uh, that was a bug, actually, that was introduced a few years after the game released. Uh, Team Cherry decided to... Um, come back and release a new update long after the um, God Home DLC was added, um, where they fixed a couple of bugs and added some quality of life um, features, but also inexplicably moved all of the elevators in the game, uh, well, I think all of them, um, slightly, so that on lots of them you can just kind of squeeze between them and the wall. It um, was their attempt at patching out elevator storage, so they, I, in getting rid of a big glitch, which they failed to do by the way, you can still do it, they've just added a little glitch, or a little janky interaction as well. Um, so for those that don't know, Team Cherry's, sorry, Hollow Knight is a perfect game, um, 
it is full of bugs, but that's kind of the point of the game. Um, yeah, we definitely in the community, it's not known for being completely robust, but also if you ask us, the little bit of bugs or unique interactions tend to be what makes Holy Knight really interesting as a speed game, just because it gives you so much depth of what you can actually do with what is otherwise a like somewhat limited seeming system. And it's really cool just seeing like how far these on its surface simple mechanics can be pushed. Yes, we and have was the oh, this was the Soulmaster. I say was. Psych. This is the Soulmaster. Um who is guarding a, our second spell. Oh god. Yep. And he just slams his head into the ground a lot. Um can't be good for his brain really. Um but uh we finish him off quite easily and uh, are, are you... Yep, okay. <laughs> you can... I think you can jump on that wall, right? You um, get, like, a... stuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there is a barrier preventing you from travelling to the top half of the room again, unfortunately. Right, and so, so this... this is our second spell the Desolate Dive, which gives us a source of invulnerability, but also lets us break those like crumbling floors that rattle when we walk over them. Um, it is quite useful, but it is much better as a combat spell when we get its upgraded form, which we'll be seeing soon. I actually got the double fake dive yeah. there, but I'm going to go for Sanctum Seal Route just because um, it's a bit more consistent with Geo. Yep, so there uh, May did what we call a fake dive, which is where you dive right at the edge of a floor, and uh, you break the dive floor, but you get caught by the uh, real floor next to it, and uh, don't actually go through the floor. Um, that's useful in a couple of places. Um, also, it's, uh, May said she got the double fake dive, that's a very precise trick um, where we specifically dive through one floor while fake diving the floor below it. Um, it's very precise. I think it's physics frame perfect if I'm not mistaken. Um, I love that you're hyping me up, but I don't think it's that tight. I do think <laughs> it's that tight. Because, like, current patch runners tend to downplay how hard physics frame perfect tricks are because. Current patch inventory drops a physics frame per perfect, and we do them a lot. Right, and just swapping our charm load out of it. Do you want to explain the charm system and over charming and that? Because we kind of glossed over it. Uh, yes, so charms are um, extra trinkets that we can uh, equip to the knight. Um, they, each of them adds a unique behavior. Um, for, such as uh, bigger spells, cheaper spells, um, more soul gathering, um, uh, all the way to showing the knight's uh, marker on the map, the most useful charm in the game, of course. Um, and each of these charms cost a certain number of notches to equip. Um, over the course of the run, we will get a few more notches. We won't get all of them because they are not percent but we will get a fair number, which will allow us to um, equip more charms to make the knight more powerful as we go on. Now, it uh, may oh. look like I just got a bit bored there buying the toll, but turning around sends an event in the FSM manager that makes the bell appear more quickly, and so it saves like a pretty substantial amount of time by just spam turning around, which is a bit funny. Yes, essentially the toll listens for any animation to finish. So we just turn around quickly and then the end of the night turning animation um, triggers the bell disappearing and the, uh, um, uh, the, the toll disappearing and the bell coming up. Can I share a super fun update really quick? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. 
So the path of pain has just rocketed forward with $2,961 out of the 4000 that we need. So we are absolutely destroying it, putting us also at $85,000, 85457 to be precise, out of the 87 we need for the Celeste Denny percent, which is just wild. Uh, this comes from a $1,000 anonymous donation saying, watching Frost Fatales with my daughters who aspire to be speedrunners themselves, and we all want to see that painful path. I've tried it myself. It didn't go well. Show us how it's done. <laughs> Thank you so oh my much God. for your donation. <laughs> it's so <Refreshing>. sweet. <laughs> Would you like another donation? Absolutely. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So we have a $50 donation from Saul who says, while I'm disappointed you aren't defeating the girl boss herself on this girl list of days, I am looking forward to all the percents. You'll definitely get busting ghosts in the glade and busting grim moves with the master. All us mantids and kitties and sillies are cheering you on. And hi, Jamie. Hiya. Um, sorry, who was that from? Sol. Solthus? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Another wonderful part of the community. Um, yeah, Hollow Knight has just a really, really nice community. This was my first speed game, and I just felt very welcomed, and it certainly made it... Um, it motivated me to stick around and to improve a ton and so thank you to everyone that's donating and cheering me on both now and over the years all right so now we're coming up on the next movement ability which is the crystal heart um this ability is essentially a um, super dash uh, but to in order to get to it we need to do a little uh, platforming segment Just weaving between these lasers. No underplant. This is. I so don't know sad. how to do it with the Dash Master <laughs> Cycle. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, underplant is a uh, trick that saves time in any percent. But because we have Dash Master here, I don't think it actually saves time to even go for it um, because the cycles are different when you can dash more often. Um, but now we have the Super Dash and will go super sane as we uh, get make our way back out of the Crystal Peaks and into Resting Ground. Yep, um, so this whole segment is quite dicey because our bench is still set outside of Soul Sanctum and we need to not die otherwise we get to walk all the way back and there are so many intentional damage tanks in this split and so many spots where it's easy to get hit unintentionally. Um, so I'm just being a bit quiet while I focus on everything. Um, do you want to explain dark rooms as well, maybe? Uh, yep, so this room may seem a little bit difficult to navigate. You are not supposed to navigate it in the dark, um, but instead you are supposed to purchase the Lumafly Lantern from uh, Sly, the shopkeeper in Dirtmouth. Um, however, doing so costs 1800 Geo, which uh, we don't have. So instead of going to buy the lantern right now, um, we're going to instead just do it in the dark. Um, that one's at, that dark room's probably the hardest in the game, uh, other than some weird reverse dark rooms um, and journeys. Um, there is another very dark area, oh. Dark Deep Nest. Ah. So what May was going for there is um, Buggy Skip. Um, that bug uh, above that is frustratingly stuck above the ceiling uh, can hit you out of the um, of the uh, Descending Dark item obtain animation. Uh, and doing so will give you control back so you can go to the exit um, much earlier. Right, and now we are in Resting Grounds, where we are going to get the next skill ability, Dream Nail. Yeah, this whole first 
30 so minutes of the run is super skill heavy. We just are obtaining essential skill after essential skill, beelining our way from one to the other. Um, but it will slow down soon. Um, this is a pretty slow section if you had any other updates for us. Absolutely wild updates. In fact, Path of Pain is sitting at $3,211 out of the 4000 we need. So that's 80% of the way there, everyone, putting us at just under 800 that we need, with us also sitting at a total of 85744 which means just over 1000 more to unlock Celeste Denny percent as well. So in terms of donations, we also had a $50 donation from Aggie who says, Vanilla Claw? SMH my head, what is this rando seed? Tongue face slash lighthearted. GL with the run, May, you're gonna hit it out of the park. Let's get Path of Pain happening. And indeed, I think that is in exactly what'll happen. <laughs> Thanks so much, Aggie. I think it's a safe bet. And yeah, thank you, Aggie, <laughs> another wonderful member of the community who I actually met through the Australian speedrunning scene and then was unceremoniously roped into Hollow Knight. Um, just to explain that, um, you may have noticed that we kind of just disappeared from the room um, after picking up the Dream Nail. Uh, what May did there was um, by pausing and unpausing the game extremely quickly as soon as you load the next room, while the screen is still whited out, you um, can actually regain control and make a beeline for the exit. And if you do it quickly enough, you'll get to the next room before um, the uh, you get locked into the sleeping animation. Yep. Hey, Sobni, mind if I pop in really quick? We, uh, Absolutely. we have Go ahead. another update here. We are sitting at 92% of the way there with $3,711. And we've crossed $86,000, which is amazing. <laughs> so I swear I, just I just blinked and $300 <laughs> popped up. <laughs> I know. It's just flying at this point. And I do want to point out that we have a bid war between Save the Nailsmith and Nail the Nailsmith. And the reason why I need to point this out at this exact minute is because they are $1 apart with Save the Nailsmith at $118 and Nail at $117. So, anything can happen at this point. <laughs> Just saying, save us faster. I'm, I'm completely unbiased, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what... Uh, we just talked to Salubra, who is the um, charm shopkeeper, um, who sells a whole bunch of charm notches, as well as some very useful charms. Uh, one in particular, Shaman Stone, is the most useful charm in the game, and it is not even close. Um, it costs three notches, um, but for that you get a 33% uh, damage boost to your spells. Which may not sound like a lot, but it also um, causes in particular the fireball to be much larger. And what this does is it allows for us to get those double hits where we have the fireball hit an enemy multiple times a lot easier and a lot more consistently. So it actually increases our damage output by a lot more than 33%. Yep, and we also grabbed a charm notch from Salubra, so we're at 5, um, which lets us equip one of the two notch charms we have equipped, as well as um, the shaman stone without going into that over charm state. Did I explain overcharming? I don't think I did. Um, there is an optional mechanic in the game where if you uh, equip more notches than you are than you have, um, the game initially doesn't let you. But if you keep trying, eventually it does, and you get put into an overcharmed state. In this state, you do have the b benefits of the charm, but you will take double damage. Um, we actually were in the overcharmed state earlier in the run. Um, but only for a very short time frame as May went and picked up a charm notch pretty much immediately, um, which took her back out of the overcharm state. And here comes the return of Norman, Norman 2. Um, 
now he's spawning uh, these flying enemies called follies. Uh, a little fun fact, if you if those follies seemed like they were moving a little bit slowly for you, um, you should cap your frame rate. Um, they, lots of flying enemies in this game have frame rate dependent behavior, but the most noticeable are the follies whose speed is entirely dependent on your frame rate. So if you are getting 1,500 frames a second, for example, um, they move, I think, faster than your dash speed. Um, so dodging them becomes quite difficult. Um, in this run, however, we are capped at 150 frames a second for a couple of reasons. Um, one is to get rid of that um, those frame rate dependent um, issues, but also um, the shriek, uh, it becomes a little bit more consistent in getting all of the damage hits off um, when we are at a lower frame rate. Yep, anything below 150 or below is going to be pretty much consistent. At higher frame rates though, of the four ticks of shriek, you'll pretty much only ever be getting three, which matters a lot, especially for some quick kills where we need those hits to count for things like stagger counts. Um, otherwise, we have a very, very, very bad time. Right, so here's an Encore boss. Um, a few of the bosses in the game have a Dream Boss variants. Uh, this one is Song Tyrant. He is the variant of the Soul Master we fought not too long ago. Um, these bosses have more health, are much faster, often have new attacks, um, and in general are quite challenging to deal with. Um, the one respite is that... Oh, he is teleporting everywhere today. Um, the one respite is that if you die, uh, you do not get sent back to your previous bench, but instead wake up uh, right next to the um, entrance. You can immediately try again. Yep, um, the biggest thing we're looking for in this fight is those double hit shade souls. Um, any attack where we can get double hits is really good. We had a ton of teleports which basically just waste time, but then the second half of the fight was much more solid. Yep. And we have a second fake out of course, um, and the ending have all mid-air spawn. Um, Ending here, we're just trying to try and get as much damage in as possible. Oh. Uh. There we go. <laughs> Making um, me scared. So, yeah, there. the phase two there, you can have an aerial or grounded spawn. The grounded spawn, you just D Dark three times and it dies. And then the aerial spawn, you get to basically recreate everyone's favorite scene from the Matrix and dodge those uh, soul orbs as you're trying to get any damage in whatsoever. Yes, the, the um, mid-air spawn there is absolutely brutal, um, especially considering that we do, while we do have um, the upgraded fireball and the upgraded um, dive, we haven't picked up any nail upgrades, and I don't think we will for a while, if I'm not mistaken. Not um, for a very long time. Yes. Um, so our nail is going to stay at the initial five damage that um, we start with, um, whereas the spells have gone up to now Shade Soul is doing 40 damage, so that's eight times. A uh, nice little elevator squeeze here if we can. Yippee. Um, so uh, um, Shade Soul has gone up eight times, and D-Dark, if you hit all three of the hitboxes, um, you get 88 damage per uh, cast, which is quite a lot. Especially considering D-Dark also gives you those nice iframes. Yep. And we're now going to the... I maintained for a long time worst area and worst boss in the game, but I have seen the light. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so now we are approaching everyone's favorite uh, boss and uh, most alluring uh, god in God Home. Uh, wait, no. Damn. I, I, I think it's time. <laughs> you That's jumped the gun by about 30 seconds. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that in a second. But now, though, we are going to go through West Waterways to pick up a Marsha that's hidden down here. Um, 
as full masks are percent, we need to pick all of them up. However, we can quit out in the middle of the animation um, to get back to the bench that Major sat at. And now we head to uh, the most alluring god in God Home, uh, Luke Mom, um, who is also a very difficult boss um, that nobody would ever chain die to. Um, uh, moreover, the approach to it, is, uh, Fluke Mom, is actually also not that fun, um, simply because we have all these enemies constantly running at us, um, and uh, if as you kill the enemies, they actually spawn more enemies, so you have to um, keep killing the enemies and the ads. Um Nice and quick Fluke Mom kill there to give us Fluke Nest. Now, Fluke Nest has a bit of a history as a charm. Um, it initially was very broken, um, in that if you killed an enemy with Fluke Nest, um, the, well, the, what the charm does is it turns your fireball cast from a fireball into a cone-shaped... Uh, it's kind of a shotgun. Yeah, shotgun of, of flukes. Um, and each of those little flukes does damage. Um, in older versions of the game, this did a frankly disgusting amount of damage. I believe 144, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, oh. Ah, unfortunate. Um, but in this version of the game, it's broken in a very different way. And um, we're going to try and abuse that here, fighting this next boss, Stung Defender, um, who just likes to dive around a lot. Um, also likes to dive out of bounds occasionally. Um, oh, I don't have soul. There we are. Fortunately, we can I give can a quick update? Oh. Go ahead. Is it okay if I jump in for a quick update? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so wild news, less than $200 to the Path of Pain, just as a heads up. Um, so that could close out any second. So chat, you know what to do. Little little wink wink. <laughs> I also just wanted to shout out that I got some very interesting news. I have heard that if we unlock Celeste Denny percent, there are more intriguing incentives coming, but we won't know what they are until we unlock Celeste to start. So that's where we're aiming right now, folks. Just under 600, no. Yes, math. If we hit eighty-seven thousand dollars, you'll know what those incentives are. I'm not even gonna try to do math. I'm so sorry. Back to you, Somni. <laughs> yep. Uh, right. Somni just, just did a, a bunch of acid skips. <laughs> yes. So um, by um, crystal dashing above acid, uh, you can just in mo skip most of the acid pools in the game. In fact, all of the acid pools in the game, uh, to the point where the random what on earth. I'm sorry, I've never seen the worm bounce backwards off midair like that. Um, <laughs> uh, we're basing these guys over to help us uh, damage tank out of that animation. You see that we still have the text up um, as we're leaving the room. Um, but yes, uh, I believe that in the ram there's a randomizer connection that actually completely removes the Isma's tier ability we just picked up, which is the ability that lets you swim in acid. Um, so every single thing um, that should be locked by acid in the game is in fact possible to get without it. Apart from one, yep. there is one acid pool. There's one acid pool. pool. <laughs> there is exactly one acid pool where they actually put a wall up before you have Isma's. Um, and but that doesn't lock anything, it's just a shortcut. So now we're heading through a Basin for the final movement ability? Um, I, I remember this game. Yes. Tram Pass is a movement ability. Tram Pass is, is definitely a movement ability. And, um, and, how, and Cyclone, of course. Um, that True. is actually a movement ability. Um, but the last ability that the game would consider a movement ability, which is the Monarch Wings, our double jump. Um, to get there, first we have to head through these Morlurks, who spit out uh, semi-random um, 
uh, infection bubbles. There are some consistent setups, but um, uh, a lot of the um, setups are ju just do just have a random chance of getting you hit. Um, so yeah, that was good. Consistent. One hit more uh, lurks is pretty nice. Yep. I believe. Yep. So what May did there is a trick that we call a trans dash. Um, by dashing into a wall and immediately jumping, um, you can actually jump before the dash animation ends. And doing so, you actually keep, you reverse your dash momentum um, uh, until the dash is over. And then you start moving up from the jump. So it's a way of sort of moving yourself around corners. Um, that allows us to just get up that side of the room, which is a tiny bit faster than going around the left side. This boss here is Broken Vessel. Um, they are guarding the uh, Monarch Wing's ability, but we are not going to grab it just yet, because Broken Vessel has their own dream boss um, that we have to defeat. And it is faster to just go straight back here and do it before we go pick up wings. Yep, because short of nail upgrades, we're basically doing about the most damage we will be throughout the run, or like the amount we will be doing throughout the run. Um, sorry, I'm going to just focus. <laughs> um, if you want to explain maybe yep. how Dream Warriors scale and why we don't get the nail yep. upgrades. So nail upgrades in this game uh, do a few things. Um, Obviously, they increase your nail damage, but they also um, cause some bosses to scale their health. This health is proportional to the nail damage, but our spells do a flat amount of damage that is not scaled by nail upgrades. So by not upgrading our nail, we make sure that those scaling bosses still have a, the lowest amount of health they're going to have. Ooh. The lowest amount of health we're going to have. Um, that, that's an unfortunate death, but um, yeah, I just played can... that a bit poorly, but also got a little unfortunate with some unstagger timings. But it's okay. And just showing off that you can re-enter dream fights without much time loss. Yeah, yeah. The most time loss is the uh, the time spent in the fight. Whereas if you die in most places in this game, you suffer quite a bit as you have to walk back from a bench that's probably a few minutes away. Also getting a few of these Shade Soul double hits. Um, Shade Soul's hitbox is so hilariously large that very often the knockback that Shade Soul provides on its own is enough to knock uh, uh, light enemies into the double hit. Uh, so here we're going to actually deliberately keep this last uh, balloon spawn alive uh, because by killing ourselves here, um, we actually. Um, exit the dream ever so slightly faster than if we were to um, do so, uh, than if we were to simply wait. And we still, since we've already killed Lost Kim, uh, the dream is already there for us to talk to. Yep. Uh, the dream boss is mention... also give us... Sorry? Sorry, did you mention Fluke multi-hits yet? No, I didn't actually. Um, Fluke um, is the other... Fluke multi-hits is the other... Um, major damage source in this run. Um, essentially, as I was saying earlier about Fluke being broken on earlier patches, Fluke is also broken on later patches. Um, because when Flukes hit an enemy, they do not actually despawn, but um, somewhat deactivate. They become invisible. Um, however, if an enemy leaves and re-enters that Fluke's hitbox, um, it will get hit again. Which means that some bosses you can just disintegrate by um, abusing these persistent flukes uh, to uh, do way more damage than you are intended to do with a single cast. Yep, which combined with flukes already high base damage, um, multi hitting a fluke can do like 160 damage plus. Um, and they're going to be using that quite extensively in the upcoming fight. Yeah. 
And for comparison, the Shaman Shriek, which is the highest damage attack, uh, other highest damage attack in the game, is 120. And flukes come out a lot faster than, than Shriek. So it's a, it's a pretty big um, damage boost. Now we're going to be fast traveling back to Crossroads for our second yeah. visit to Peaks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, nope. Um, oh. We do Glowing Loom, then Failed Champ, then Cliffs. Okay. And then <laughs> from there. I am very wrong. My apologies. Um, we're going to instead do this, uh, go through this spike tunnel here. Another fun fact, I believe all these spike tunnels in the game that you can do without the Crystal Heart ability. Um, that one is pretty tricky because um, you have to do some pretty uh, difficult movement to get through it. Um, but if you have Dash Master, you can actually do it relatively easily. Um, just by um, pogoing the spikes and then immediately dashing uh, before you hit these spikes in the ceiling. So there we pick up Glowing Womb, which is a uh, charm that spawns some little enemies, but we aren't going to use it because um, they use spawning those enemies actually costs soul, which, considering that spells are our highest damage source in the run, isn't going to be great. And that now we to get go one to... more hit there. Hmm. Right. Um. All right. So, you may wonder why May just uh, walked into a whole bunch of enemies. That's because her health actually doesn't matter here. Um, because we're about to enter the next dream boss. We're going through all of them very quickly. Um, and when you enter a dream, your health gets refilled, but your soul stays the same. So by taking a bunch of damage, May could hit more enemies to gather more soul quickly. Or Failed Champion, the dream boss version of False Knight, the first boss we fought. Wow, that is a terrible pattern. Yeah. False Knight is a unique boss in that hitting False Knight does not actually give you soul until False Knight's stagger. Um, so we have to be a little bit careful with soul management, especially in the first phase. Um, this little tantrum attack uh, brings down those rocks from the ceiling, which uh, you have to be careful to dodge, but you can also hit into False Knight to get some extra damage in from far away. And now we move on to the third stagger. Um, Yep, so False Knight's mace in that tantrum attack, I think in all attacks actually, also has a hitbox. Um, uh, um, yep, uh, so <laughs> the um, we can actually slash the mace itself to keep damaging False Knight during that um, uh, tantrum uh, from a safe distance. Um, there, may uh, launch flukes at False Knight to finish them off. Um, and then jumped off the stage to quickly exit the dream once again, a bit like the Lost Kin uh, deliberate death. Yep, so that first um, phase, we got really unlucky. If he does the stationary jump as the first attack, that fight can be over like 20 seconds sooner. Um, it's one of the higher variance fights. There is a path mapped out for if you get that bad pattern, but it involved an extra intentional damage tank, and we took that accidental hit early, so I didn't want to um, risk potentially dying. Um, it was, you know, better to lose 10, 15 seconds and live than lose a minute to a mistake. Yep. Now we're talking to Sarah a whole bunch of times. Um, that do that uh, screen shaking was us open the, the door to the right, which I don't believe we go through in this run. Once again, I, nope. I showcase my excellent knowledge of 107. Um, but mainly we're here for a very specific ability, which is the upgrades, second upgrade to the Dream Nail, Dream Gate, which allows us to set a point to return to um, anywhere we want, with some terms and conditions. Um, said doing so it really helps us with routing because we're going to be film clearing a whole bunch of areas 
um, as we get into the later stages of this run, and being able to set a quick respawn point um, anywhere you want really helps us to um, quickly go between different branching paths of areas. Especially using cutouts and dream gates in tandem, you can basically have two different options of where you want to go to at any given time, and using those in conjunction you can just traverse the map way quicker than was intended. Now we're back in a familiar room, the first room in the game, uh, because we are going to the secret if you hold left when you start the game. Uh, and then we're going to go up to the Howling Cliffs. Uh, in Cliffs, there are a few things to do. Um, most importantly, um, well, the, all of them are equally important, obviously. We have to do everything. Um, but we pick up this ability here from Matto, a nail master. Uh, nail arts are special abilities that uh, you can activate by holding down the uh, nail hotkey, hotkey, keybind, um, and then releasing it. Uh, Cyclone, in particular, is useful for a lot of movement, because if you don't repeat, repeatedly press the nail button after releasing, um, you actually get your full speed temporarily uncapped until the end of the um, cyclone animation. And it also accelerates you downwards a little bit if you're already moving down. Um, which can be used as an alternative to inventory dropping in a lot of places. Um, so here, uh, after Gorb got dispensed of very quickly, uh, May is going to deliberately get hit by this Vengefly um, to get out of the um, stun lock that we get until the essence was gathered. And also then Double Whammy um, uses the Vengefly to pogo up to this area. Um, this area is the Stag Nest. You are intended to get here only after unlocking every Stag Station in the game. But by pogoing that specific Vengefly, you can get up here um, without doing so, which is very helpful since we don't really want to have to wait until we go, go everywhere in the game and spend a lot of money on every stag, including stags we don't need. Yep. And our biggest motivation for coming to this area early is what we're about to do in a second after this little dark room. Um, yep. Uh, this dark room gates a charm Joni's blessing. Quiet hill. Okay, there we are. Um, so that dark room is one of the trickiest. Um, uh, it's it, there are some safer ways to do it, but they're a fair bit slower. Um, so instead, we're just going to pogo the spikes along the bottom of the ro room repeatedly. Um, so if you miss one of those pogos, uh, you do go straight into the spikes, and you don't get your hazard respawn updated uh, while in dark room. So if you get hit into spikes, you're going back to the beginning of the room and you're doing it all again. Um, here is the main motivation for coming here early, uh, which is the Grim Tent, uh, Grim Lantern. So very nice wiggles. Um, sorry. Um, uh, Grim is one of the DL, uh, free DLCs for the game. Um, they appear in Dirtmouth after you um, flash that lantern a bunch, and uh, the rewards are an extra charm, um, a uh, sorry, an extra charm, an extra charm notch, and another boss fight. Um, in fact, the most fun boss fight in the game, in my opinion, um, and I think most people's yep. opinions, to be honest. Uh, big motivation for lighting that and going to this whole cliffs area so early is the um, flame collection in order to power up the charm and unlock the. Um, other grim fights are uh, scattered all over the map so the sooner we can start collecting those and working those into our routing the better um, because most of how we approach this entire mid-game section is basically dictated by getting the grim flames in the order and um, they appear in lots of three so three will appear you do them all and then another three appear you do them all you get a grim fight another three appear, you do them all, and then you get another grim fight. 
Um, so it just dictates, like I say, how we approach this entire mid to late game section. Hey, can I jump in with, a, with an awesome update quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so first off, I want to share that you've been getting so much love from your community. Uh, we have $103 left to go for the incentive and just under 400 for Celeste. We have been going up so fast with our donations. Uh, like this $25 one from Python that says, GL107 May, you so got this. Jamie, thank you for comms and I hope everybody has a great time. 3X incoming Prage. Thanks so much, everyone, for your donations. We're almost there with both of our incentives. Let's get it. Thank you, Bison. Uh, so we picked up a very out-of-the-way charm. Shape of Un is uh, kind of in a, the middle of nowhere, but put through my personal favorite room in the game, so it's all worth it, obviously. Um, here we're going to go pick up the um, Grimchild, the um, charm that we get for hitting that lantern in cliffs um because we there is a grim child to a uh, grim flame to collect in green paths which we are about to go back to nice little bounce. what a polite gentleman i'm sure he won't have any violent tendencies later on <laughs> nah grim, grim would never attempt to kill you that, that seems okay. unrealistic of him. This is our little guy, the Grim Child. Um, he'll be accompanying us through a lot of this middle section of the run. He is but a little fella at the moment, but he will get bigger. Um, and we get to foster that growth. So now we go to clean up what we missed in Crystal Peaks the first time we came around. Um, uh, we do it now because in the next room uh, is a Grim Flame to collect. Here is a Mimic. Um, there are a few of them in the game that exist as little fake outs. Um, that one we in, we uh, will hit just to gather some soul off for the rest of the uh, segment here. So here is the Grim Flame. Um, this this Grim Child can be a little bit annoying, um, depending on the attack pattern, which appears to be the case. We got the worst wow. possible attack. Yep. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> At least you didn't So we're just a... waiting for that attack, and it can do... It has two attacks, we're waiting for one, and it can do that dash attack up to three times in a row. And we got three dashes in a row, so congratulations. Now we go on to CG1 and then CG2. Um, Crystal Guardian 1, uh, I don't, we, it feels a bit mean to just walk in and just immediately smack them off the bench. It's... It was sitting on my bench! <laughs> I mean, you don't, you're not even going to sit at that bench. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> Then uh, we made uh, Crystal Guardian really angry now. Um, so this uh, fight, uh, they do double damage and move a lot faster um, and have more health. Um, but we still need to do it because there is a uh, Mars Shard? Vessel Fragment? Mars yep. Shard. Um, locked behind it. And of course it's a boss. We do all the bosses. And the scary part about it is that it does double damage and we have two to three required damage tanks left in this split, depending on how our execution is. Um, so we really want to avoid getting hit there as much as we can. Yes, a lot of the... P Crystal Peaks in general is a very dangerous area for speedruns because in basically every category there are lots of intentional damage tanks. Um, as you're going through the area. So if you accidentally get hit, you usually have to heal um, to... Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, just barely missing the uh, thunder on there. So what Maya's doing there is uh, by just barely getting far enough to hit the grub jar, um, you actually miss a hazard respawn update trigger. Um, that um, will set your hazard respawn to the right-hand side of the room. 
Uh, by avoiding that, she was able to just simply jump into spikes and reappear at the left-hand side of the room, which saves a fair bit of time. And also, a really annoying bit of movement. I hate leaving that room. Especially without Shade Soul, it is so hard to get past the guy with the uh, laser arm cannon. And if you get hit by him, it's super easy to then get hit into spikes. And we're on two health, so that would be death. And then you get to walk all the way back from the bench. So it pays off so easily to just take it easy, not get hit, and off we go. That is the best inventory drop in the game. Yep. Very big, uh, in general, any big fall um, iron patch will go for an inventory drop if, if they can. Um, but again, the physics frame, frame perfect means that sometimes you just miss them and you just have to deal with it. Pace is also a nice area for grubs, uh, there's a lot of them. And here comes Deep Focus. Um, this room's a lot of fun. Um, Shoutouts to Zalian, by the oh. way. Oh! Oh. Uh huh? Yeah. Uh, I guess I was slightly high, but damn, I, uh... I've not been killed by the first laser there before. Normally it's the second set that's a bit spicy. Uh, okay. Off the um, bingo? That's never happened before. <laughs> so mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm being, um, I'm being real. Fortunately, that actually that area actually links up with where we were initially right before crystal guardian so we don't have to go all the way around like we would have had to if we had um died near that deep fo sorry near the um grub but it's still not ideal um it just certainly could be a lot worse because now we just have to go down this hey somni you know what else could be worse Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, oh, I yeah. have an idea. <laughs> oh, do you? So so here's the thing. I'm Canadian. Uh, it's my duty to apologize to people. Um, so I'd like to be the first one to publicly apologize that you will be doing Path of Pain tonight. <laughs> we met it. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for, for giving me more suffering. <laughs> we did have $25 from Sira, I believe it's pronounced, sorry if I didn't pronounce yep. it right, saying, looks like you're doing Path of Pain, May. You are killing this run. We're all rooting for you. Thank you very much, um, Sira, another one of the lovely Hollow Knight community members. I nearly placed a dream gate, which would have been catastrophic. <laughs> Just to answer a question in chat, uh, we've been referring to physics frame perfect um, tricks. Uh, this game has two frame rates, your render frame rate, which can be anything, uh, but for this run it is capped at 150 frames per second to uh, deal with some frame rate dependent um, uh, behavior. Um, but it also has a physics frame rate, which is a steady 50 frames a second at all times. I thought you were going to dash through the transition there earlier. Yeah, I was a little worried for a yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it just despawns. I think it's a soft lock. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think oh, you were doing yeah. a, like, 103% <laughs> run if that happens. Yeah. Yeah, because that locks you out of a lot of percent. And it means you can't do NKG unless you... Yep. I guess... Well, you, we aren't going to God Home, so uh, you can't even banish and do NKG in God Home. Yep, so don't make that mistake. It's something you want to greed, but you do not want to over greed because if you do, you get to press numpad 3 or whatever your reset button is and try again. Needless to say, I don't particularly want to have to do that in a marathon. <laughs> Can I slide in with one more update? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. So we are still working towards that uh, Celeste incentive to unlock Denny percent. Uh, we had $10 from Gio Lubred who says, donating to help get Carrie to play some more Celeste. Denny percent seems like its whole own path of pain. 
I mean, you heard it here first, right? Thanks so much for that donation. It seems like we've got to keep this going for all of our platformer friends. So we're going to have Path of Pain now that we've met this incentive. And if we get another $221, wait, yes, math, we get Celeste any percent. So let's work towards that, folks. Only need to hit 87K. We oh. got this. Oh, brilliant. Really looking forward to that. Unfortunately, this uh, gauntlet here is very tricky. Um, fortunately, though, we did just set a dream gate a few seconds ago, so um, getting back yeah. isn't going to be too difficult. This gauntlet's not too bad, but as soon as you try and do it fast, there's some very precise movement that I've apparently lost all ability to do quickly. Um, it's just a lot of trying to greet as close to the top of these spike pillars as you can, this one in particular, because it lets you see dash over the top there. Where did my wings go? Um, okay. And the rest is pretty much home free as long as you cancel your sea dash into this transition. If you do not cancel that sea dash, um, you go straight into the spikes, which is very entertaining, um, but also not ideal. <laughs> And then we get the next ability, uh, Great Slash, uh, from Shio, uh, an excellent NPC, who um, uh, we really want to find a friend. Um, I wonder who that friend could possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge, donation incentive. Yeah, one might say that the two of them would make a happy couple. <laughs> should we should we check in on that one quickly? Yeah, oh, no. yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Okay, so checking in on what's going to happen with our our lovely friend, the nail smith. Right now, the nail smith could be saved with one hundred and sixty eight dollars winning, with nail shortly behind at a hundred and twenty one dollars. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we had ten dollars from Beth, who said. Donating to save the Nailsmith, I can't allow for him not to go live with, insert gay spoilers. Good luck <laughs> on the rest of the run, less than three. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. I'm just going to say that uh, nailing the Nailsmith, if we would otherwise go and visit him, is faster. So, not to bias anybody, but uh, that would be nice. Yeah, but the visit happens after the run. <laughs> also, one health here is okay. Um, Ooh, I just need to one. lock in and we're fine. Nice little floaty wings there. All right. Ah, I think not. We need to get Stay six hits right. of soul um, for the massive moss charger quick kill coming up. Otherwise, we actually have to fight a boss. Also, you are getting dangerously close there. Three, four, yikes. I can get two here. Yes, careful soul management throughout a lot of the rooms in this run is very often a feature of Hollow Knight runs, so if you want to run, unfortunately you do have to learn to count almost to 10, um, which I still find extremely difficult after how many hours? Probably 1,500. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't worry, I lost a run the other day to not knowing how to count to 12. Well, that, that's really hard, to be honest. Like, that... 10 is pushing it. 12 is, like, actually insane. I have not seen that created movement before, actually. <laughs> yeah, it saves a little bit of time um, if you get it first try, but the slope there is really awful. Always count on these really awful time saves. <laughs> worth noting is through this whole section we've been overcharmed, um, and that's why everything's been as scary as it is. Um, and we're still overcharmed because 
having Dream Wielder for um, this bit coming up is just makes being Overcharm for this whole segment genuinely worth it. Um, because we need to get six hits of soul for a Grimkin, and the faster Dream Nail that gives double soul lets us get that in one Dream Nail, whereas otherwise we like are trying to get nail hits in and trying to get a Dream Nail, but if you go for a Dream Nail, then the Grim Child can just shoot the thing you're trying to Dream Nail, and it just becomes very high variance and very easy to go very wrong very quickly. Like, even more so than just being overcharmed in general. So here we're back in this room again for two more things that we missed. Well, one of which we didn't miss, but this one we did. Uh, Fury is actually the first thing you can get in the game. You can access it before getting any other... Oh, uh, no. Yeah, that's... Um, that was the guy we wanted to dream nail, but I barely misspaced it. Okay. All right. Uh, and yes, that Grimkin flame there that just became available as we uh, spoke to Grim a second time. Yep, so they're the tier two Grimkin. They gain an extra attack and a bit more health, but they still die in a double hit VS, uh, sorry, a double hit Shade Soul. So you don't really notice the health difference until you get to the third tier, um, the Grimkin Nightmares. Which can be very scary. Yeah. <laughs> Because the Grimkin Nightmares also do double damage on every attack. Yep, which makes them... I, I don't believe you do any of them overcharmed in this run, right? Especially no, thankfully. Okay. thankfully. But they're already in scary areas, so yes, it's... Exactly. Here we're doing a little gauntlet for um, another spell, uh, Howling Wraiths. Howling Wraiths itself actually isn't the most useful spell in the world, um, especially with these spells we already have. But its uh, upgrade, Abyss Shriek, um, will become one of the best sources of damage behind, of course, Flukes, as well as enabling it one very funny skip um, very later, much later on, which I'll explain when we get to. Yep. Um, yeah, we're doing pretty well so far. Um... And we're getting into the worst boss in the game, hands down in terms of this run. It is so bad, it is basically just gambling, um, and it's either over in like 3 seconds, or it's a 40 second ordeal with you having your heart in your throat the entire time. Ugh. Oh, yikes. Come down here. Okay. Oh, thank God. That was decent. Um, so, Noah's takes five hits of Shade Soul to kill. She can teleport randomly based on time, and then she can also has a 35% chance of teleporting on hit. So you have four casts, so you need one double, and you need her to not teleport out of anything before it hits. And her teleportation's random. The um, little bowl, uh, the little ghosts that spawn move somewhat randomly. There's a little safe zone at the bottom, which is why I was staying there and waiting for her to kind of come to me. But it's just awful. Um, if you don't get all the hits you need, then you have to start chasing her around and getting nail swings in, and that's when it becomes extremely easy to start taking hits. Um, it's just so bad. Um, it is, yeah, I like say, worst boss on the run. Pretty much anything else, if it goes wrong, like, yeah, that's my fault, but no, I sometimes just need to hold an L. Would you like some more love from your community and some reassurance? Would love some. A little Amazing. post no eyes treat. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'll just update that we only have $150 left to get Celeste. So let's do this, folks. We can get it in a snap. Uh, but in terms of the love, we had $20 from CZ saying, Path of Pain, that sounds like a nice time that I'm sure that I'd sure love to see you do again. Good luck, May. Love you, girl. Less than three. 
CZ, another one of those wonderful community members. Um, another Australian, in fact. So, Will Australia. Um, <laughs> my national pride comes out as soon as it's about Australian speedrunners. <laughs> Some people may notice that um, after killing Zero there, we actually didn't pick up the essence that Zero would give us. That's because we don't actually need it. Um, we get more essence over the course of this run than is required for 107%. Um, so we actually only killed Zero there for the all bosses requirement. But once we've killed Zero, there's no net uh, requirement to then talk to him and get the essence off him. So by leaving the room a bit earlier, we can uh, save a little bit of time. Yep. Um, this is all going pretty well, actually. This arena, by the way, is the worst arena, well, second worst arena in the game to do with no items, which is annoying as one of the randomizer random starts is right next to it. Um, so, you doing said arena frequently, um, itemless is quite a frequent occurrence there. And we pass right by a bench here that we don't get yet because we don't need it. And um, we're going out into Kingdom's Edge to fight Hornet 2, um, which is the spice. It's basically the dream boss equivalent of Hornet 1, but um, it's technically not a dream. Oh my gosh, that was one of the dashes of all time. So, right. can you safety... Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, we have an intentional safety bench here, actually, um, to do some charm menuing. It's a neat little safety strat that doesn't lose, like, any time. And, um, yeah, it gives you a bench here. Yep. Yes, there's a nice little semi-hidden bench. There is a sign pointing straight to it, but I still didn't find it in my casual playthrough. Um, uh which allows us to swap out some charms and also reset our save point, um, which is very helpful um, considering the difficulty here. I do want to quickly shout out that Save the Nailsmith has taken a huge lead. Uh, and if someone wants to flip that really quickly, because Somni was talking about how, uh, you know, Nail is faster. So if we want to make the speed run a little bit easier overall for Somni, one donation that could also get us Celeste at the same time could tip it over so that we can nail the Nailsmith instead and save the speed run. How about that, hey? <laughs> Spreading lies, yeah. as always. <laughs> I would never spread lies. Misinformation on the internet? Alright, I'm gonna focus up. I am... I got robbed there, but none of those double hit. Ma'am. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Yes, just um, trying to get double hits in on Hornet is uh, quite tricky, actually, because a lot of her attacks reset her momentum. Um, so she can quite often um, just decide not to get double hit um, because she'll just decide to cancel the knockback from your Shade Saw. Um, however, if you can get those double hits in, she becomes a lot easier as um, she just melts a lot quicker. She drags us out of the uh, uh, cast-off shell. That's that's what it's called. I I know Hollow Knight lore. Um, <laughs> uh, and we just immediately Dreamgate out. Um, you, that actually does set your save point point again. So even if we were to go back to that last bench, um, it would be slower to quit out because it would take us right back to where we just woke up from. Yeah, it's one of the few non-bench hard saves in the run. Um, Desolate Dive pick up's another one, as is the Ancestral Mound, where we get Vengeful Spirit. So even if you don't take the bench that's right there, it'll be like, whoa, 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 buddy. You're here. <laughs> Please, 
Notice this bench looking thing? What if you, like, sat there, interacted with the game mechanics? Of course not. Um, so here it comes our first visit to the Abyss, uh, which is unlocked by Hornet 2, as we just did. Um, we're going to be here twice because um, that door that May just passed uh, requires a specific... Um, it requires you to have 13? 15? I can 14. count. 14. 14. Uh, perfect. Every time. Um, a uh, number of lifeblood masks to enter, and also at the bottom of the abyss um, is a area that is only opened once you have another specific charm, um, which we do not, we are not able to get until we've come down here for the first time. There, we just picked up a shriek, um, our other good source of damage this run, um, and now that gives us. Pretty much all the damage we're going to have until the cleanup stages. Um, remind me, do you get yep, uh, nail upgrades before collar? Yeah, you get, you get nail three um, okay. for white defender collar. Ah, yes. Um, Alright, so now we're going to do the funny lighthouse climb. Um, here, the uh, siblings that. Ooh, um, each of these siblings does double damage to you, um, but they're more friend than foe, as we can use them to pogo up and get our way up to the lighthouse quite quickly. And a first try lever hit. The one cycle. <laughs> Hitting that lever first try is actually impossible. Um, nobody's ever done it before, so... World first. Keep this has never first. happened before. <laughs> <laughs> The rare good this has never happened before in a marathon. <laughs> That's like a double special, I think. <laughs> so, um, there may just quit out of the um, shade cloak animation, um, which um, takes a very long time. But fortunately, you can just quit out and come uh, and load back in immediately. Um, she also then immediately, when loading back in, did a dream nail early control, um, which. Once again, I want to say is physics frame perfect, but I'm not sure. Um, I believe I it. Be. It's pretty rough yes. on this path. Um, uh, where you press Dream Nail right as you load in, um, you skip the um, sleeping animation um, that you ha usually stand up from after loading into a save and can move immediately. So now is our first visit to Grubfather. Um, We've been saving these little grubs all over the run. We do have to save all of them, as uh, the charm reward for saving every grub um, is a percent. Um, we also... Um, something interesting is that on older patches of this game, um, we would be picking up all the Geo as Grubfather was throwing it. Um, that's because on older patches, um, the amount of Geo that Grubfather throws when you get it all at once lags out the game to a frankly unreasonable extent, um, to the point where you just lose time to, uh, to lag frames. Um, so it is best to keep picking up the Geo. Over here, that's been fixed, thankfully. Is now a good time to pop in with some donations? Yeah, look, absolutely. Yep. Awesome. So we had $200 from Kevin of Computer who said, please let Carrarium play the game. And it's sure going to happen. We only need 76 more dollars. So let's do that, folks. We can get it. Uh, very relevant to this game as well. We had $50 from Kate Latte that said, let's go, May. Do you need to save a grub today? We do have to save a grub today. We have to Heck save 46 yeah. grubs today. <laughs> to be precise. Heck yeah. Thanks so much for your donation. <laughs> so that was Brooding Morlek, who is one of the um, bosses that you fight in the shortest category in the game. King's Pass ILs don't exist. Um, in fact, no ILs exist. Um, uh, four Marsh Shards. Um, 
which actually never leaves Crossroads, um, and is a very fun category for people looking to get into running Hollow Knight, wink wink, nudge nudge. Um, uh, as you can reach Brooding Morlock by simply pogoing the spikes leading up to uh, her arena. Um, however, having so much damage makes Morlock a lot quicker, so we can do it much later here. Here comes Leg Eater. Um, you notice that Mei has Dung, uh, Defender's Crest equipped. Um, I don't believe that's for damage at all. No. Um, pretty much, because it does pretty much no damage. However, the main utility of Defender's Crest in this run is that this specific NPC, Leg Eater, gives you a little discount for being stinky, um, which uh, helps us gather a little bit less money over the course of the whole run. Yeah, I think canonically, Dong Defender like saved him or something, um, and so he's like, "Oh, you're friends with uh, the Dong Defender. Yeah, discount for a friend." Canonically, what's that word? I don't know. Really canonically? Are. No. Yeah, this game actually <laughs> doesn't have law. This is just a collective uh, misinformation campaign. Yeah. Then we make Grim angry by attacking him early. If you actually are respectful and let Grim bow to you, um, then Grim won't immediately do this attack. But we actually want no. Grim to do the, ooh, Grim to do this attack immediately because we can do lots of damage while Grim is stuck up in the middle of the room. Um, we go a stagger, and we can farm a little bit more soul during this stagger. I got no soul from that. Yeah. This might do it. Yeah, oh, okay, we excellent. got good Shriek RNG. Getting down to the 1 HP just for content after the run fight's ended. It's the Grim fight if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Bow. I can't believe the disrespect going down here. Didn't bow at the start of the fight, didn't bow at the end of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asserting my superiority. <laughs> the knight's a better parent for the Grim Child. <laughs> so that fight uh, unlocked the final set of Grimkin, which we do. Uh, Grim, Grimkin? Grim Flames? Um, are they also Both. called Grimkin? I don't know the names of enemies yeah, in this game. Yeah, they're. Either. Okay. The three tiers are Grimkin Novice, Grimkin Master, and Grimkin Nightmare to get a little. <laughs> A little nerdy on you. So you can tell which one of us uh, actually paid attention to the lore on the first time around playing this game. It's more just, no, just speedrunning it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I learnt the names for things. I could not relate. I will continue to refer to them as thingies. Um, we are talking about Denny's earlier. Elder Who, big Denny's fan. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, he spams his little pancake attack. <laughs> yep. Um, pancakes so we're, we're getting are... a crossover now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, uh, Elder Who is a very frustrating boss fight in some categories, um, because there is pa that pancake attack, Elder Who completely disappears off screen for, so you can't do any damage. Um, and if Elder Who simply decides to do it several times in a row, you just never get an opportunity to do damage. Um, and in some categories that do Elder Who particularly early, um, getting several pancakes in a row can lose upwards of 20-30 seconds just to that one attack. Yep. I, I just need to cut in for a second. Uh, the Elder is going to get pancakes. We, we're going to Denny's. Uh, we've unlocked Celeste Denny percent officially <laughs> for part of our schedule, so we can give pancakes to everybody tonight. We'll see. That's <laughs> Thanks be so good much to for watch your donations, as I everyone. Come down from this run. <laughs> yep. Now we're going to. Um, I think a lot of people's fav favorite boss. Though the second uh, iteration that we aren't actually going to fight because it's Pantheon specific, um, uh, Sisters of Battle, uh, we do not get to fight. However, Mantis Lords, still fun, um, though we do have so much damage that they don't put up much of a fuss for us, unfortunately. Nice a little edge cancel. <laughs> 
Yes, if you fall right on the corner of a ledge, you can sometimes slip off um, before the hard fall animation kicks in, and so you uh, don't uh, get stuck in place. We have to be a little creative with our hard fall um, cancels on this patch, because while on Oh, on the speed patch for this game, 1221, you can open inventory in midair to cancel your full, um, hard fall animation. And on patch 1432, you can open and close your inventory as you hit the ground to cancel it. Uh, on 1.5, you can do neither of those, so you've got to avoid it in any other way you can. That was a like perfect Manta Slots fight. That was a several second gold. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Here we get money. Um, Madison, get, I, I always forget just how much money it is, but it's the second largest geo reward in the game, um, which feels appropriate considering how much um, weight is putting on this, putting, put on this boss fight. Um, but still, always throws me off the. Mantis Lords gives about the same as much to you as Watcher Knights. They're also like a pretty early game boss. Like yeah, casually, exactly. you can run into them right after you get the Mantis Claw. So like very early on. And then you just get given way more money than you're going to know what to do with for an unreasonable amount of time. Perfect very spawn nice. there. Double. Out chills from that uh, Grimkin RNG. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what's next is uh, as much a mystery for me as it is for you. Um, <laughs> uh, yep. I know what's going on. We get to use the one. This is the one acid pool where you can't <laughs> go through without Isma's tear. <laughs> yes, yeah, so now we're headed to East Frog Canyon. Um, which is kind of separated from the first time you get to this area. You can access this area from Green Path, um, but annoyingly for new players, the map is on the east side, which requires more progression to get to than the west side. Um, so, um, uh, can be frustrating as you enter the area for the first time. However, um, it does also have a few useful things, one of which was that Charm Notch. Um, just nice to have, um, as uh, Charms will be very powerful later on in the run, and uh, that Charm Notch is quite quick to get, so we can uh, justify going out of our way there. Yeah, and um, do you want to explain Dreamers? Yes, so to finish the game, you need three to free the three dreamers who are sleeping in their dreams. So, of course, you need the dream nail to enter their dreams. Um, two of said dreamers are um, uh, locked behind a boss fight. This one, Umu, is a real run killer for any percent. Um, uh, mainly due to Umu being invulnerable 90% of the time and having completely random attacks. However, here, since we have Shriek and Shaman, we can do a fun little quick kill where you basically just bully Umu into the top of the screen and um, just keep hitting with Shriek until they die. If you want to feel like a speedrunner, this is maybe the qu easiest quick kill I do throughout the run. Yep. Would have looked and really bad go. if I'd missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Though, of course, if you have, I think, health scaling for Umu starts at nail three? Question mark? I did um, not know Umu had health scaling. I thought Umu had health scaling, I think. But I think it's like Watcher Knight's boss scale, health scaling and that it um, kicks in later. I may be spreading misinformation once again. That's a common theme for me. Um, however, funny. So here we're going to get into the dreams and uh, tell Monomon to wake up um, to uh, get rid of the seal. One of the three seals on uh, the Black Egg. Now these seals they... will not sing you kiss from a rose, but they do protect the final boss. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
<laughs> Thanks, you got me. <laughs> I'm like, I need to make good on a promise because people won't let me forget. So I got to come back to tell them. Uh, so I, I did promise if, if we met Celeste that I would come back with more incentives. So your girl is here to serve. And uh, apparently we're serving pancakes because the first incentive is that we get to name Madeline, which is the protagonist of Celeste Denny Percent. And people get to pick what name they'd like to see up to a max of 12 characters. There's a bid war. Will we go back to old memes or get a new creative quip? Uh, it seems we're getting creative because we promised pancakes and pancakes have delivered. Pancakes is currently standing as the name of choice for Madeline for Celeste. So make sure to get those donations in if you'd like to change the name of Madeline or if you'd like to see some more pancakes. <laughs> Another mascot mask shard here. Um, almost got a new one. Uh, I really know the route for this run very well. It must be said. Um, <laughs> um, and next Something. we go to Queen's Gardens. Yes. Uh, for the, I think, I think we just do everything, right? Um. Yeah. Yep. And we're setting yes. up the flower later yes. on. Um, Yes, um, so later on in the run, we're going to have to do a very annoying uh, quest um, that locks a mask shard, which of course is required for 107% completion. Um, that gate that you just saw briefly at the top of the screen is very helpful um, for said quest, where you have to go from the right-hand side of the map all the way to the left-hand side of this area without taking a single hit, without using any form of fast travel. Um, doing so is very tricky, um, and uh, getting hit uh, loses a few minutes as you then have to quit out and try the whole thing again. Yep, casually it is quite difficult. In a speedrun, we're trying to do it quickly, so um, it can go very wrong and of course we're doing it in a marathon so we're a little bit stressed and a little bit highly strong for that few minutes and of course and it's right at the end of the run <laughs> and of course you do do more things during flower quest as well you pick up a mask shard that normally you'd get much earlier in the game if you were playing casually yep and one more note about mask shards they um Every fourth one, so each complete mask, will actually fill up your health. So we've been very careful with our mask shard routing to give us that health refill at convenient times. There's one later on in the hive we'll be getting that's super important for this reason. It makes a brutal area manageable because you go from a very um, easy to get hit on kind of area Getting the mask shot especially, you kind of just have to damage tank a lot. Um, and then you go into a boss, which optimally in the fight, you damage tank a lot. So if it weren't for that... <laughs> oh, sorry. If it weren't for that, you would um, be dying almost every run probably. And runs would just be called Get to Hive and then throw it away on gambling. Um, but we don't have to do that. If you're wondering why May didn't save those three poor grubs in that room and specifically picked out one, that's because those other three were mimics. Um, we are not soulless and leaving grubs to die. Well, not die. They're, they'll 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 just sit there for a while until someone else comes along, which definitely happens. Um, yes, and here this is the most annoying arena in the game. Um, it's very long and has a lot of high health enemies who can sometimes get hit out of your shrieks and other um, spells. However, we're he's doing this very well, and yep, just completely destroys that. Oh, can you hit the? Did you just hit the corpse of the um, background one that you killed with a spell? Yep. I did not know that was possible. <laughs> We're learning today. <laughs> yeah, I have practiced that arena quite extensively recently because if that goes poorly, it goes awfully. It is so hard and I used to suck at it, basically. 
as does everyone who hasn't practiced it. But when it goes quickly like that, it feels really satisfying and um, you want every bit of health you can get because we're going into more gambling. Yep, so these are Loodles. Uh, these are the worst enemies in the speedrun, um, barring the armored Loodles, um, which are just more healthy versions of the same thing. Um, they have completely random jump angles every time they jump. Um, <laughs> that was mean. Um, so getting through these rooms as quickly as possible is basically an exercise in just praying. Um, thankfully, Mamu bounced nicely there. Um, so uh, died very quickly. Yeah, that's a very specific quick kill setup, um, and it's really nice to get because if you don't get it, Mamu, yeah, can just bounce around wildly and you can both lose a ton of time and it's very easy to get hit. Um, and we did neither, so that's nice because health does matter a little for this section. There's one damage that we're basically guaranteed to take, and then there's um, one other that we can take. And that's ignoring making a mistake there. Yeah. So now we're heading to the next dreamer. Um, in a second question mark? No, yes, right now. Um, uh, Hera, who is sleeping in the beast den. Um, this area is filled with uh, spiders who like to be a little bit unpredictable. Um, they will sometimes stop and shoot a projectile at you, um, though sometimes they will just continue walking. So if you're trying to navigate around them in tight, in tight spaces, you can imagine that uh, some trying to predict when they're going to stop and when they're going to keep moving as you're trying to carefully dodge your way around them is uh, quite tricky. Yep, in this category it's nowhere near as bad. Um, in any percent, you're doing this with basically no loadout, and you can't take that shortcut into Beast End that I did. And that makes it really hard. It is right at the end of the run, and it's probably the hardest segment to do quickly, where it's certainly up there um, outside of the boss fights. But it's also super fun. Um, so for anyone looking to get into this game, I really recommend any percent. Um, it is about 30 minutes. It's got a couple of very tricky fights, but there are reroutes and alternative like upgrades you can get that make it a lot easier. And um, it's a great starting point to then kind of go, well, I like movement, or I like boss fights, or I like these other things, and then go into other categories, maybe something longer like 107. Because um, I also love 107. I think it's quickly become my favorite category. Oh, so yes, a uh, slight warning, uh, coming up there'll be uh, bugs crawling across the, uh, the um, overlay of the screen uh, while we are still in deep nest. Um, but yes. Um, next we are going to somewhere else, uh, but I assume uh, going to Weaver's Den, which has another charm for us. Um, but first, of course, we grab a one of our final uh, flames. Geno. Unfortunately, we don't have to kill a Grimkin for this one. We just have to speak to our friend Brum, um, who kind of wants us to betray the troop and um, banish them uh, out of Hallenest. However, doing so prevents us from fighting Nightmare King Grim um, without going to the Pantheon's birth. So um, we're not going to do that here. Yeah, so we basically go, it's like, here, take this, banish the troop. Like, end the cycle, and you go, damn, that's crazy. Anyway, I'm going to take the flame. <laughs> Don't question it. Yeah. Right. Nice little um, wall jump there. The slope on that wall ends a little bit um, above where you can wall cling, so you can just jump off the very bottom bit of it. Oh, of course <laughs> you back up. That was a very rude devout. Um, 
yes, so um, those devouts are annoying because you can't just damage tank your way through them. You can use the Shade Cloak um, to dash through them with the invulnerability frames you get, um, but other sources of iframes do not help you move through them. They actually have a wall that prevents you from um, just going straight through them. So yes, if one of them gets into a position where you can't jump over it, it can get very annoying very quickly. Here comes Galen. Can I distract yeah. from oh. the scary bugs with a nice update? Yep. yep. Okay, so if you don't like bugs, let me introduce you to cats. Um, and what I mean by that is, as promised, I'm back with another Celeste incentive. Uh, and this one, if met, we need $2,000 for it. We're just starting out. Our red-haired Celeste protagonist, a name that will be chosen by Bidwar as well, will don a pair of cat ears for the Celeste Denny percent run. So if bugs aren't your thing, if you'd prefer some cat ears, check those out. Uh, do you have time for a quick donation as well? Yeah, yep. Yeah, you've got yeah. probably two minutes um, awesome. for all the donations you want. Perfect. So we got a $20 donation from Frank.af who says, Always love watching Marathons live, and after all the trouble he's given me, I can't wait to see Nightmare King Grimm get trounced. This donation goes out to my amazing wife Squeaks, an inspiration to me and a champion for so many women in her male-dominated field. Ten years strong. Congratulations, and thanks so much, Frank. Oh, yeah. We also had a $100 donation from Conrad Kuzmin, who says, Donating for a Celeste run while watching one of my favorite games being played at an amazing level? Yes, please. Thank you for what y'all do, and let's continue supporting the National Women's Law Center. Agreed. Let's do it. We're already over $87,000 raised, which is just amazing. Thank you so much to everybody who is contributing to this amazing cause. Every donation, small or large, goes to this wonderful cause. So thank you. We really appreciate it. So, um, May just picked up the most useful movement item in the game, uh, Trampos, uh, which doesn't actually count as movement and also isn't a percent, but locks several percentage, um, points that we need to get, um, and also is the best horizontal in the game. It takes you all the way from Abyss to Edge in mere moments, so clearly it's better than Dash, and you want it before Dash in every randomizer. If you couldn't tell, Jamie is a big fan of the rando and probably plays <laughs> more rando, or has played more rando than she has the actual game by yeah, that's a multitude, probably. Yeah, Close I... Close to it. <laughs> yes, I'm actually not, uh, haven't done that many runs of this game recently, uh, but I have spent a lot of time uh, doing the randomizer, which, if you are craving more Hollow Knight, um, it, more of a Hollow Knight experience, I highly recommend, uh, as well as, of course, speedrunning, both of which um, really scratch that itch of um, Hollow Knight's really amazing um, movement and... Uh, just everything about. I, I could talk about everything excellent in this game forever. Um, so I, I will spare you that rant for now. But yes, um, uh, we now both get the randomizer to fight and speedrunning have lots of resources to help you get started. So if you would like to, um, I would recommend visiting the Hollow Knight speedrunning Discord. And now, uh, we go through this long section here, um, and circuitous, uh, to get to Nos, uh, who is just a friend, just just a just a pal, just a just a friendly little little guy. Um, yep, friendly. Yeah. Now we want him to run to the left immediately. That is not well. running to the <laughs> left, my guy. Wow, that ah, is that's awful. Ceiling. That's even that's even better. Lovely. Yes, so uh, if Nosk runs to the left immediately, then we get um, all the flukes to hit. It's uh, lovely. Getting bullied for a bit. There we yeah, go. That fight can be over in about five seconds if he runs to the left. You just do three flukes, turn around two flukes, and he dies because of like fluke multi hits, basically. But we don't get that, and so the fight just drags on. Um, that fight, you can just save 20 seconds. It's yeah. incredible. 
Meanwhile, on 1221, you can simply use flukes to hit Nosk before they even spawn, um, which is even funnier, um, and can end the fight before it even, before the starting animation even begins, if all the flukes are hit. Now, I don't think I've explained these shade gates, actually. Uh, those um, black uh, gates are um, only passable if you have the uh, shade cloak ability. Um, so, waiting until uh, we had shade cloak before coming down here helps us route this uh, required shade gate in a lot nicer. And nice. Oof, oof. That's some spicy movement there. Um, then we have this uh, nice and long movement gauntlet. You're intended to uh, continuously bounce off of the uh, garpeeds going along the bottom of the screen there, but you can also just um, bounce off of the spikes uh, below them, so uh, you can just power through. Also, very nice um, damage tank there. Um, usually you would wait for the garpeed to come up from the bottom and stay on top of it, but by damage tanking, um, you can get inside the previous Garpede as it's going up and just barely squeeze through the spikes. Um, you have to make it before your iframes wear off or you will um, get hit into the spikes and hazard respawn. Yeah, um, that went perfectly. That split is very dangerous, especially if I do it without quitting out from Sharp Shadow, um, which is like maybe a second faster but it's also much harder. It's debatable if it's even worth it, but I really like the movement, and so I've basically just grounded out to consistency out of spite because I want to do the fun movement. <laughs> Always trust me to do the very, very um, tight and frankly insane optimizations in uh, rooms over a very long category. So here, another grub to save, and then we uh, get another pair law. Uh, these pair laws are required for the um, later nail upgrades. The first nail upgrade um, only costs Geo, but every nail grade afterwards we need to give Nailsmith an extra pair law to, um, to upgrade our nail. And then we head to, uh, if I'm not spreading misinformation again, I yes correct uh, correct excellent <laughs> I'm I'm on a roll right now um, so uh, here comes a quite fun area and this is actually the split in percent between this category and 106 percent um, the other non 112 full completion category for this game apart from 100 percent which doesn't exist um, uh, 106. Uh, is the run that is done on the speed patch for this game, 1221. Um, this run is basically... does does it pretty much exactly the same. In fact, everything exactly the same, apart from... the, the route is different, but the things you do are all the same, uh, except the... Uh, one of the bosses in the game didn't exist on that patch, and that is coming up at the end of Hive, Hive Night. Um, beforehand... Uh, uh, oh, 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 um, I don't know the left side of this room. Uh, oh yep, god, I that would be why like I don't know it, that room. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and then we come, come to this Grimkin here as well. Um, Very good. Um, just hit you there. Was that the B? Oh, that the was B. The B. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, uh, coming up to this next boss who didn't exist until 1.3. Uh, for context, we are on patch 1.5, um, which is the latest available patch. Um, so you can follow along at home. Uh, <laughs> uh, so before that, uh, this area was kind of anticlimactic because you got through this very difficult area with lots of you know, high, very highly damaging bees, and then walk through what's clearly a boss arena to then have no boss appear, pick up a charm, and then leave. 
Um, it's worth noting probably. the area was also much easier on earlier patches because oh, the yes. little bees died in one hit instead of like four. Yeah, and also were hilariously small. Um, like they're they're pretty they're pretty teeny here, um, but I think they're about a quarter of the size. If my literally, yeah, yeah, um, which does make them even more adorable. Um, and the fact they don't annoy you as much also makes them a lot more enduring. There we go. And here is our DLC boss fight. Um, who likes to teleport out of a lot of attacks, but a lot less than dream bosses. So what May's doing here is uh, using a property of Shriek, where if you're looking left, left right, is push. left, yes, um, left, you push the boss away. Whereas if you're looking right, the boss goes towards you. I, I don't understand how that occurs, how on earth any of that makes sense in this game. But if if we if if we actually look into how it works, we'd be here here all day. Um, but it's very helpful because it means that we can deliberately manipulate when we want uh, enemies to get knocked away or knocked towards us. It may have been unintentional, but it's actually such cool game design. It adds like so much depth to Shriek and makes it like a lot more consistent. Because otherwise, it's very easy to just like get enemies sucked into you, and it makes Shriek feel really bad to use. Or flying enemies get knocked out of it immediately, and you only get like one hit. So it adds a lot of depth to it. It's just very unintuitive casually. Um, yeah. So as another example, Mamu. The quick kill we do on that, um, we do a left shriek and sorry, a right shriek and then a left shriek to um, push it against the wall and then pull it in for the final hits, um, which is just yeah, like one of the cool little things that add up over the course of the run. Is now a good time for some updates? Yeah, go uh, for it. Yep. Probably in the next minute. Awesome. Sounds great. So I just wanted to say between Save and Nail, the Nailsmith, Save is currently in the lead at $493 with Nail at $246. For naming Madeline for Celeste Jenny Percent, Waffles is in the lead with $40. So we've had a, a turnover from Pancakes. Uh, and don't forget about that cat ears incentive as well. If we want to put cat ears, the adorable cat ears, on little Madeline for Celeste any percent, then definitely check that out. And don't forget to assign your donation to your incentive of choice. So there are many to choose from. Check them all out. Uh, and we had $100 from Master Odin who said, Save those grubs for the grub father. I will do my best. Speaking of <laughs> grubs, we're about to come up to a very grub... Uh, heavy boss in about five minutes. We've got a couple of stops to make first. Yeah. These uh, aspid, uh, primal aspids are casually some of the most annoying enemies in the game, and they do remain pretty annoying uh, for the speedrun, though you can manipulate them uh, rel with relative consistency. Um, the only problem is that Sometimes you just don't have time to do so, and they can just get in your way or shoot a, a stray projectile that hits you on the other side of the room as you're trying to move through it. Fortunately, I don't think many of them matter in this run. Um, and uh, in Colo, they matter a bit. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so that was Markoth. Markoth is one of the poster children for uh, bosses that get much worse when you have nail upgrades just because of that health scaling Jamie talked about earlier. Um, so we are very deliberately placing him um, before we get all of our nail upgrades. Yes, Markov is frustratingly difficult with a high nail yeah. level because I think he scales with every nail upgrade you get. Mm. He gets a r unreasonable amount of health. Um, even if you have just a single nail upgrade, um, which makes your spells a lot less potent and you have to get back in to deal damage. And Markoth's shields really make that a uh, dangerous proposition. Yeah, and in general with Dream Warriors, they're like the heaviest scaling things. Um, they start off with enough health 
that you don't need to get nail hits on them for soul, you can just spam spells and they die. As soon as you cross that threshold into needing nail swings to get casts of soul, all like consistency and quick kills and that just f go out the window. So it's really important that we stay under that threshold. And so that's why we delay any nail upgrades whatsoever. As well as allowing okay. us to try and get them all in one or two batches. Um, as much as we do want to deny nail upgrades, once we've freed all the Dream Warriors... Freed? I don't think... Ah, we're freeing them from <laughs> Freed from, from this mortal coil. <laughs> um, I, think that, I think the idea is they're trapped in their dreams. So, like, I think you are technically freeing them. Um, but... Uh, yes, uh, delaying nail upgrades until once all, they are all done, but before co the Colosseums, because um, the Colosseums, you're doing a lot of damage, and if you're go doing trying to do that all with nail zero, you're gonna spend a lot of time just farming soul for your spells. Um, so we do get also nail, nail arts are really oh, yes. good in Colo. Um, and by getting three nail upgrades, it means that our Great Slash and Dash Slash hit some very important health break points. Yeah, uh, so now we have a, a very game. hard quick kill, so I'm going to be quiet for a sec. Yep. Nice. Excellent. Right. Nice. That is so perfect. <laughs> Good job. This um, the collector is the evil entity who's been trapping all the grubs, poor grubs in jars. Um, and as, as such, he has a couple of extra hidden behind the uh, the end of the boss fight here. Um, the item just off the left screen there is a map that shows you all of the grubs, um, so that. Um, you can marvel in the sick and twisted mind of the collector as they collect, as they carefully record all the poor grubs they've sentenced to eternity in the clear. clear I don't know where I was going with that. I was gonna say you'd just be rambling. <laughs> I'm yapping. Um, yes. So then we have. More grub heavy, actually, um, as we go back to clean up the um, grubs that we skipped on our first um, visit to um, Right Side City. Fun fact we don't actually need that dream hail, it just gets the guy out of the way. <laughs> that is excellent. Fun fact the floor may is on just there is a dive floor for anyone who does not know. Um, I love the little um, uh, pieces of uh, extra environmental detail there. Yes, uh, there is uh, an enemy there that uh, you are that you have to kill in order to um, open the right hand side of the room here. Um, may, however, just uh, use Shriek to kill him through the floor. So didn't have to get in the arena and uh, struggle with weaving between his attacks. In a current patch, any percent, that's actually a very um, interesting enemy because uh, of the uh, AI manip you can do. Is now a good time for a little update? Uh, um, I'll just quickly explain this boss and then sure. we can... Sounds yep. good. So this is the Watcher Knights. Um, they're guarding another Dreamer and they're going to be using Flutes and Shriek very extensively. All right, go. If you want. Okay, awesome. So we have uh, our cat ears incentive sitting at $290 out of $2,000 already. So we're making movement on that. It's looking good. Uh, and we also have some love from your community. We have $15 from Serpin who says, OMG, Path of May incentive already reached. Good luck, 106 plus 1%. You got this. We're proud of you. Also, Lola says hi. Also, Jamie, you're also doing great. Save Nailsmith. Thanks. Uh, something to note here is um, people who are familiar with this game may uh, note that we didn't do something that you may expect to save time. 
Um, and that's something that you should do if you're struggling with this boss in your casual playthrough, which is there is a chandelier above the arena, and by breaking a wall before you enter it, you can actually break the chandelier and crush one of the Watch Knights before the fight even starts, which means you have one fewer to fight. However, while doing so should be quicker, flukes do such a ridiculous amount of damage that it is straight up faster to just kill the extra Watcher Knight um, rather than oh, oh <laughs> rather than um, uh, going out of your way for the chandelier. Also, shout uh, outs. <laughs> yeah, so this is the one dreamer in the run where we don't have Dash Master. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, um, I, I guess I didn't explain what Dash Master does. Um, Dash Master lets you dash uh, more frequently and also lets you dash downwards, um, which as you can imagine for a speed run, very helpful. Um, generally just dashing a lot more often saves a lot of time in general room to room movement, but for some areas we care more about the damage we can get with our other charms. Um, so there, yes. That's the only dreamer where we don't have dash master, and because of the different dash timing, if you press dash too early because you think you have dash master on, you will just have your dash input eaten uh, because your dash the game you was just hungry it too early. <laughs> yeah, game hungry. I mean, that's not game hungry. That is a lack of uh, skill. But <laughs> we call it game hungry because you know, gotta make ourselves look good for the marathon. <laughs> And some very <laughs> deliberate soul gathering there. And then we talk to Lem, who's being moody by the fountain. Lem comes out here as soon as we've picked up a dreamer, um, and we have to talk to him to get him back in his shop. Fortunately, we do come here via the fountain, so it's on the way anyway. Um, however, some routes for some categories, you actually have to come from the right, and it, it loses a fair bit of time to do so. There, we're cashing in all our relics that we've painstakingly gathered over the run. And as you can see, now we have a fair amount of gear that we are now going to spend all in one place. Um, just like your mama told you not to do. Um, at the Nailsmith, um, for the first time round. Um, how are we looking on the second visit to Nailsmith so far? So, in terms of the Nailsmith right now, we have Save at $493 and Nail at $246. So, we'll see what happens there. Okay. Once again, saying that uh, sa uh, Save is faster. Nail will tell you otherwise, but it's wrong. <laughs> However, Can I also share a quick donation? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. So we also actually had a $25 donation from Anonymous that said, Cat, ears, must, see. Uh, and I actually found out even better news. It's not just ears. It's also a tail. So if you want full cat costume on Cataline, as we're calling her, uh, then de definitely, definitely send in those donations. We are 15% of the way there at $315 out of 2000. So let's crush this before Denny percent starts. So here comes I love the second hardest boss in the run, um, White Defender. Um, this is a very special boss um, that you can fight multiple times, but we're only going to fight once. Um, he's a much faster version of Dung Defender that also doesn't get stunned if you dive him out of the floor, which in general just makes him a lot more, more tricky to deal with. And we're going to be going for the screen skip if we get one more dung throw. Uh, I want you to, uh, yeah, I want you to do the uh, one where you bounce around and then you can kind of consistently set it up. That's unfortunate. Yes, the screen scopes may have been going through through throughout the run. Um, by getting hit by an by the boss right as the boss screams. Um, you can cancel the stun animation, um, and uh, very good, by the way. Um, uh, you can cancel the stun animation and uh, avoid getting locked in place, um, which is very helpful for continuing to deal damage. Um, it's also good because while they're screaming, 
the boss isn't moving, and so it gives you just free reign to wail on it. Um, so it saves like 20 seconds or something crazy in that fight um, over what I just did. But um, still an okay fight, and um, there's enough variance in it, you can't expect to get it every time. Wiggle. I do love that Wiggles are optimal in multiple ways in this category, both um, for multi-hitting with um, Cyclone Slash. Um, by wiggling, you can uh, cause the Cyclone hitbox to, end to exit and re-enter things like breakable walls, which allows you to hit them more often. Um, and of course, the, um, the tall early control the toll skip. Early can uh, not early control. Sure, toll animation, animation skip. Cancel. There we go. That's what it's yeah. called. Um uh that you get by just wiggling back and forth um after purchasing a toll. Now we head up to the Colosseum. This is a very tricky area. Um we have three trials to get through, each one getting more difficult. Um are you doing overcharm colours? Uh we're overcharmed for colour one. Yes. So, uh, the, the reward for the first Colosseum is a Charm Notch, which opens up a very interesting decision we can make, which is that by going one Charm, one charm Notch over Charm for the first Colo, and hence taking double damage, um, we can have Soul Eater on, uh, which is a very catcher. powerful... Sorry? Oh, Catcher. No. We have Catcher, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, which is a pretty... We do Late Eater. Yeah. Um, this uh, charm is very good because it lets us farm more soul. Um, it, ba it basically just means you get more soul for, for your money. So more soul per should, soul. Yeah, more soul per soul. <laughs> more soul per soul, which lets you um, cast spells a lot more often. Um, which, even though we've just upgraded our nail to nail 3, spells are still very important because in order to hit something with your nail, you need to be quite close to it. So uh, having spells is very useful um, for clearing large amounts of the screen at once and hitting enemies very far away from you. Because you're going to try and do as much as possible. These Aspids, um, fortunately these Aspids do die to a single Shaman Shade Soul, so these ones aren't going to annoy us too much. Um, some of the later spawns, though, can be a lot less convenient. Ah. Yep, using the increased right. hitbox size of Shade Soul there to um, hit both the top and bottom energy at, uh, enemy at the same time. Getting more uh, damage for your And that's where the important um, damage thresholds that May was talking about earlier comes in. Um, Primal Aspids also die to a single Nail Art um, with Nail 3, which means that um, we can dispatch of them very quickly. Oh, oh the oh, spikes are uh, still there, whoops. Uh, <laughs> it's for the content. Well, I don't want to get too much more content heavy. <laughs> um, Speaking of content, do you want to hear something really funny? Sure. Uh, yep. So out of nowhere, Nail has sniped save at the moment by $3. It came out of nowhere and there was a total flip. So uh, it's anybody's game still. <laughs> but Lovely. yeah, it's, it's very interesting right now. Uh, we also had $20 from Julia and Dylan who said, thanks for teaching us some tricks for our next Hollow Knight runs. Less than three. <laughs> thanks to you both. Thank you. Uh, I can't miss one. <laughs> Did I miss the third uh, one? Damn. Oh, well, <laughs> the explosion cleared it up. And then we get two girls and other ones. Ha ha ha. Uh, uh. Oh, Oof, I okay. got a little low on health there, yeah, actually. <laughs> if I hadn't fine. died then, that's I was okay. probably in trouble. Yep. Luckily, and now comes I know my the health most threshold. difficult boss in the game. The almighty, the terrifying, the all-powerful. Zote, Zote the mighty. The mighty. <laughs> um, so this version of Zote doesn't do any damage. Um, so 
is completely safe. Um, uh, however, we are going to fight a much more dangerous form later on, um, which is how he imagines himself in his head, um, which is very relatable, to be honest. Um, and there is also another fun Easter egg. Um, is it where? Hmm? Is it how he imagines himself, or how Bretta imagines him, based on the oh. stories? I would guess you... both, because Bretta imagines Zot as all powerful and almighty, because Zot is said saying that he's all powerful and almighty. Yeah, yeah. But all right. Um, and again, I think the female is... dialogue. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, this is where it starts to get spicy, so I'm probably not going to talk much for the next, like, ten minutes. If um, you have any donations that come in, feel free to, and Jamie, feel free to provide commentary as you've been doing this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Totally. A uh, quick question, how long before the bid war closes for Save and Nail for um, the audience to know? About 12 minutes, I want to say. All right, it's all right, you heard it, folks. 12 minutes. <laughs> it's right out of, after Flower Quest, isn't it? So um, we can have a final call. Oh, yeah, we have Flower. It's more like 15, actually. Yeah, so it's, all right. it, we'll have a final call when Flower Quest starts, and then, um, and then close it on the way to Nailsmith. Amazing. Well, I'll, I'll take this chance to do a couple updates then while we have some time. Uh, so the first big one is that we are still working towards Cataline. So the cat ears and tail, the full beautiful outfit for our uh, for our lovely protagonist of Denny Percent. We're at three hundred and twenty three dollars out of the two thousand that we need to get that. So if you're a cat fan like me, I've got two cats. I love them dearly. Then absolutely contribute towards that one. We do have our bid wars open as well. Save and Nail the Nailsmith will be closing in 15-ish minutes. And you can also name Madeline the main character with Waffles currently in the lead. We are completely over $88,000 now raised for the National Women's Law Center, which is just incredible to see. And we had $25 from Alice who said, Happy International Women's Day. Had to donate during this incredible Hollow Knight run. Thank you, Frame Fatales, for always hosting these amazing events. And thank you so much for donating. We really appreciate every single dollar that is going towards the National Women's Law Center. And we couldn't do this without you. Best force mimic in the game, by the way. The, the Peaks one doesn't exist. Um, yes, we're generally here. This is just about um, trying to conserve soul as much as possible, using it as a um, as efficiently as we can to dispatch of enemies before they really have a chance to pose any danger for it. If we let Sol uh, drop too low, then we start to worry a little bit. Uh, and you can see, yes, if you miss a single hit, then you suddenly have to go out of your way a lot more for, um, to uh, finish off enemies. That's a good double. But, yeah. This, uh, that platform layout is uh, scary because we're going to be seeing it later for a much worse wave in the next Colosseum. And now we have oodles and oodles of... No, not oodles. Um, these are blobbles. Uh, damn. <laughs> these are obbles. These, yeah, these are battle obbles, These are These are battle obbles. Sorry, that's what they're called. I, 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 I used my joke too early. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. My Hollow Knight knowledge, no. Um, hey, so yes, we, we've got some... Oh, Jimmy, no. I was just going to say, we've got love for you too, though, because we had $10 from Elle, who says, good luck and great job so far to both May and Jamie. So, hey, you're both killing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elle. Thanks, Elle. Yep. Yeah, comes huge shout-outs to Jamie. I was... Uh... Had some other comms lined up and then life things unfortunately got in the way for both of them and Jamie stepped up with very little warning or preparation and has been killing it. Anything for that. But yes, <laughs> um, it's always fun uh, commentating excellent Hollow Knight speedruns, um, especially when May's doing them. And so now that was, after... That was maybe the best Colo 2 I've done in my life. <laughs> Not the fastest, but leaving here on full health is wonderful. Yes, because you um, 
don't conserve you don't get health back between Colosseums unless you go out of your way for the bench. Um the getting out of the second Colosseum with full health is absolutely imperative. Well, not imperative obviously, but much nicer, uh, considering the difficulty of this uh final Colosseum. Uh, here you can see the ante has been upped significantly, as there is no real reward other than a percentage for this Colosseum. Um, so Team Cherry really just went, what if we just had every enemy all the time? Um, so casually, this is probably one of the hardest things in the game, uh, barring um, Pantheon Fire. Yeah, Pantheons are such a step up, especially P5 from anything else in the game. But when it came out, this was considered just so hard, especially like if you don't know about things like nail arts being strong or spells being strong. They are brutal. Also, these are our worst enemy. Yes, these are the battle, the armored loodles? That Death they loodles. Named. Death loodles, yes. Very aptly named. Um, that... Uh, just like the uh, hopping enemies we saw in Qu the Queen's Garden uh, are completely random and uh, this time have loads and loads of health and we have to kill them all. Um, fortunately, in the next section, which is going to spawn a ridiculous number... Oh, not the next section. Uh, it comes later. Uh, I remember colors like the back of my hand, truly. Um, and I have amnesia. Like the back of my hand. <laughs> it's kind of freckles. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, so the... Um, there, we're actually going to rely more on them randomly hopping into spikes than we are to than killing them ourselves. Simply because of how much health they have and how much they do not like to stay still. Right, I nearly got that shriek. Good enough. Getting rid of the Petras here is our biggest priority. Yes, because of the um, the arcing nature of the Petras projectiles, um, they basically just are going to hit you no matter what if you're casting spells. So getting rid of them immediately is uh, very important. Now, yes, we have to search the arena for these uh, three mistakes. That was quick. From the then here comes Norman 3, everybody. Um, and uh, he, he disappears quite quickly. Oh, Thank thankfully. God that's the last we see of him. Yeah. Three times is a bit much. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, we have these enemies, which actually um, emulate one of Ubu's attacks. Um, and this is the only place where they appear in the game. Um, so figuring out what they do on the first way through Kolo is very fun. And who could have predicted a fourth Norman? <laughs> um, yes, we um, we ended up with having to fight the Soul Warriors four times. Um, it's wonderful, truly. Um, these Morlocks are fun because you uh, hit them once with a Cyclone each, and uh, and uh, then immediately dive and that just about kills them. This is 17 seconds ahead of my best Colo 3. Very nice. That is very nice, yeah. Yes. So here we have a little power up. peaceful section um, where we can dream nail these Garpedes as they're going through the ground to gather soul and also heal in between. And then a less peaceful section uh, where we have spikes on the ground again, so we cannot... Uh, uh, go onto the ground to heal or to catch our breath at all. Um, so yes, getting rid of these enemies, especially stuff like pet the Petras, um, immediately is our first port of call. Um, and yes, a lot of these enemies are also very tanky, so um, staying airborne with these uh, air stormly spell casts is uh, very useful. And yes, that's one of the nice things we have nail arts for. And here comes Death Loodles 2, which is basically just prey. Um, you can cast a couple of spells to try and kill them, but it's more beneficial to just um, farm soul off them and then get rid of the last few stragglers yourself. 
um, as most of them will simply hop into uh, the spikes themselves. That is a very difficult um, set of noodles to dodge, by the way, um, because of how un unpredictable they are and how they can jump off the walls and come careening straight at you. Um, avoiding taking damage there is extremely difficult. I have messed this up, so we're doing our best to get on cycle again. Also, that vault twister got pushed up so yeah, far out of the it. way. <laughs> <laughs> that is about as far away as you can get it. Um, yes. Oops. Uh, taking a damage there is okay. We're yeah. just grabbing soul for their last enemy. Yep. So Collar 3 is fun yeah. in that we actually have a boss fight. And that boss fight is God Tamer. Um, a little fun fact about this fight is you don't actually have to kill God Tamer herself. You only have to kill the god. Um, after the beast is dead, um, God Tamer will just give up. Ooh. Uh, we'll just give up. There you go. Um, so you won't, if you just focus all your damage on the beast, you fortunately have a nice, relatively easy uh, final enemy to deal with, though it can still get quite dicey. And yes, follow three, no reward, but 3,000 Geo, which is very useful for our Geo routing here, because we are now going to go back, and, um, oh, first we have something else I have to gone do. to the wrong place. Yes, yeah. I think. Uh, so now we're going to Delicate Flower, so we're going to have last calls on the um, save kill Nailsmith. Um, uh, after we have. Yet. Oh? Oh, it's not Flower It yet. is uh, Zo. That is a good point, thank you very much. So, three more minutes or so. Uh, two minutes to get your last calls in for um, save kill Nailsmith. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I is think now we'll a good time it. for a quick update too? <sighs> yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna spoil the bid war for you just yet. So I'll give something different so we keep the mystery. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to let everybody know that we're almost at four hundred dollars out of the two thousand we need for the cat ears and tail for Madeline in Celeste Denny percent. So we are well on our way. We also had a twenty-five dollar donation from Cadence of Life, who said, "I'm already wearing my Celeste shirt from AGDQ, so we need to make sure we reach this milestone." Trans rights are human rights, and happy International Women's Day! What a great day! Thanks so much, Cadence. Right, so here comes Zote as he actually is, and not in the fake world of Hellenus. Um, so, uh, this boss is actually reasonably tricky, but fortunately, um, we only have to fight him once. You can actually um, beat uh, Great Prince Zote ten times. And every time you beat Zoot, uh, he gets a little bit more health and does an extra mask of damage. Um, so he gets a little bit tricky as we continue. All right. Um, now we remember to ascend the seer. <laughs> yes, we remember to ascend the seer, which is for some reason also a percent. Um, it's the percent that most people miss. Um, because after the 1800 essence you need for the final nail upgrade, uh, dream nail upgrade, um, you then have, um, to gather 2400 to get, a uh, Seer to ascend with Gorb. So that's the final nail, uh, dream nail upgrade, which allows us to uh, enter protected dreams. And there's only one. One? Uh, is the weapon nail required for NKG? I think. Uh, no. It's okay. just. Um, it is white just. Palace. Yes, White Palace, which is the uh, one of the areas required for these this game's true ending. Um, and uh, also a very fun platforming area. Yes, now we're coming up to the start of Delicate Flowers, so get your last um, incentive um, donations in. I think we'll shut it when uh, we give the flower to the grave. It's been flipping be back and forth, so I'm excited. But first here, a Soul Eater. 
And then, yes, back to, um, back to more important business. That's nice using the, um, the, just the, like, extra 40 geo from the chest rather than gathering it all. Just as yeah, a we don't actually need any of it with how rich I am, but, um, it just gives me a little extra safety net. I like taking it. Yep. So, uh, this quest is, um, very, uh, difficult, um, you, so what we just picked up was the delicate flower, and we have to carry it to the opposite side of the map, but if we get hit at any point or use any fast travel method apart from the trams, um, we will break the flower. So we have to go through the infected crossroads, um, a very dangerous area, um, Fog Canyon and Queen's Gardens, um, all without getting hit once, um, which is quite tricky, yeah. um, <laughs> to, to put it lightly. And just purchasing the last few charms that we need from Salubra here, and how many extra notches do we get? One. Just one, yes. Uh, the other notches... Nine. Yeah, we could get the other notches, but they cost a lot of geo, and um, we need to save more geo for now for. So in the next room here, we're actually going to um, get a mask shard um, as well. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet for that. No! No! Oh. my pogo go! Oh. <laughs> That's upsetting. Alright. Um, so every time we, um, we get hit here, we have to immediately quit out and go pick up the flower again. Um, so we have to now, uh, do it all again. As you can imagine, if, if uh, the further along you get and then get hit, especially if you get hit in the final room, um, you lose more and more time. So this is a really frustrating um, section of the run. Also, yes, uh, enemies that we killed on the way in last time, now because we loaded back in from a bench, um, will have respawned. Um, so we have a another additional... Um, Enemy to get out of the Yeah. Okay. It is 40 degrees today, and I am feeling <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> I believe. Would you like some donations? Would love some. <laughs> Lovely. So we had $30 from Aggie, who says, hashtag save the nailsmith. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I personally love this one in reference to the Celeste cat incentive. $25 from Cece, who said, As we all know, Celeste is the story of a cat going to Denny's for waffles. <laughs> so thanks so much for your donation. It's true, we have $473 towards the $2,000 to unlock the cat ears and tail for the main character of Celeste to become Catline. Uh, and currently the name Waffles is winning for the name. So check those out. Don't forget to assign your donation to your incentive of choice so that we don't miss it. And uh, we'll see what ends up happening with Celeste. Okay, so that's how that room is meant to look. Yeah, that was that was very good. Um, those sharp shadows are terrifying. All right. Now, there's some... Um, high variance rooms left, but there's none that have extremely high execution.
Nice. Would you like some donations as you go through this? Yeah, yeah. Keep them coming. I am <laughs> yeah, not going to be totally. breathing much for the next minute. You need minute. to focus. <laughs> so we have uh, from before a $25 from DP Oblivion who had said, GG's to everyone for an amazing event. Definitely have to see Celeste any percent. And indeed you will. We had a $50 from Minor Myla who said, I'm not gonna sing it, but I'll, I'll speak it. Oh, bury my mother, pale and slight. Bury my father with his eyes shut tight. Bury my sisters two by two. And then when you're done, let's bury me too. Oh, bury the knight with her broken nail. Bury the lady lovely and pale. Bury the priest in his tattered gown. Then bury the beggar with his shining crown. Okay, and that um, will mark uh. the end. Of the um of the save kill uh save nail um uh donation war. Whew, I'm sorry, I the um the shake cloak in the um third last room there was Oh that Petra hated me. Yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're we're fine. Uh so now we're going to go to Traitor Lord who is guarding uh one of the um white fragments. Uh, yeah. If we could get the um, the results of the donation board. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like save is in the lead, uh, and that'll be our way that we go with the nailsmith okay. today. All right. Hopefully. Yippee. Thanks so much to everyone who contributed to it. That was over a $1,000 uh, that went towards that incentive alone. So thanks so much, everybody. I keep missing the Moskin. I'm just going to go for the wall. Oh, sorry, the floor, yeah. roof thing. Yeah. Oh, Spikes. Of course you were there. Um, so this arena is leading to a boss that does double damage. Um, this is a little dicey because our save quit is at the start of Flower Quest, so we better not die. I'm gonna just gather soul on Jeff from accounting here. And then pray we get the screen skip. This is one of the most important ones. Bugger. <laughs> yep, now we uh, have to do this quite tricky fight. Um, every attack is double damage, um, but, but uh, walking in while Trait Lord is not doing an attack will unfortunately only do one. Um, there we go. Nice. Yeah, nice and safe. And this uh, will give us the um, second? First? I am keeping track of what's going on. Um, one. First, yes. First, um, White Fragment. Um, yeah, we haven't done White Palace yet. What am I on about? Um, so yes, um, also you saw May dash slash the wall there. Um, that may seem a little bit random, but that's because this room is actually part of a much larger room um, that exists to the left uh, of the Queen's Garden stag. And what May was doing there by dash slashing was actually freeing a grub on the other side of the wall that you can just barely reach with dash slash. Um, so that we didn't have to go out of our way to free the grub earlier. Yep. And now we're just getting our Marshard from the Flower Quest reward. Yep. Why? <laughs> All right. So that marks our penultimate mark, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, I think the rest are shops, right? Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, no yeah, last four yeah. come from Sly. Yeah, yeah. Um, speak, speak of the devil. Um, here comes uh, the final, sh final shopping spree. Where Psych. first we're going... Oh? We do that before NKG. This is getting some stonks for um, Nail 4. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, so yes, now we're going to go get the final Nail upgrade, um, for which first we're going to 
collect all of the grub rewards as we've now freed all of the grubs. Um, Just checking I didn't miss one. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, all, once we've got all the grubs, we get a charm, but more importantly for the rooting here, we get a lot of money, um, which is very helpful. Happy Wiggles, though. Um, now's a good time for any uh, donors. Yeah, absolutely. So we have $10 from Miss Apricity, who says, I haven't been active in a few years, but the HK community helped me through such a tough time in my life, and seeing so many familiar names in chat makes me so happy. Good luck and trans rights. And just catching. I just wanted to catch everyone up as well. We are at $473 out of the 2000 for unlocking the cat ears and tail for the Celeste protagonist. So make sure to check that out. Time is short. It is the next run. So if we want to see that happen, you do not want to miss out on the opportunity. Make sure to assign your donation to that incentive and we'll make sure it's counted towards it. Thanks so much, everybody. Yippee. <laughs> Yeah. It's really nice to hear that um, the um, how much the Hollow Knight speedrunning community has done for people because it's just been such a wonderful um, uh, place, especially for new speedrunners. Um, both me and May as first speed game was um, Hollow Knight, and uh, just the acceptance and the willingness to uh, you know make guides and. Uh, tutorialize every, every tiny little thing and all the resources it, it has just been wonderful to see um especially as it con Bellamy just Hartridge. continues to get better year on year um Bell and Hartridge. yeah if if you want to start speedrunning hollow knight's a great place to start what can i say <laughs> yeah it is a great game and a great speedrun and um, obviously this is an NMG run and a completion run, but um, there are some really um, good glitched categories. There are a couple of glitch rule sets and each one changes the game in a pretty meaningfully distinct way. Um, so no matter what your um, favoured way of completing speedruns is, there's probably something for you and probably a thriving community centred around that. Uh, yes, I think they're so in a reasonably distinct way. Oh, uh, uh, Nelsmith incentive. Shot. Yep, so we you are... Have to get, you, have to go, yeah. you have to go talk to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is him basically... Uh, I just forgot I had Sharp Shadow. That was nearly bad. <laughs> <laughs> you nearly just betrayed the incentive. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, um, so Sharp so Shadow... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sharp Shadow um, slightly increases the length of your dash at, uh, of your Shade Cloak and makes your Shade Cloak damage enemies. So um, if you accidentally forget you have Sharp Shadow on, dash uh, too close to Nailsmith, then you will just kill Nailsmith when you don't mean to, uh, <laughs> um, which is not ideal. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so now we enter the uh, final platforming, well, the uh, kind of, the Hollow Knight is kind of sparse on platforming for a platformer Metroidvania, um, but we make up for it with um, the White Palace, and especially now that we're here, uh, that, now that we met the incentive, Path of Pain, um, both of which are very um, uh, tough uh, platforming areas, though, of course, Path of Pain as you can probably guess by the name, a lot worse. Um, White Palace itself is required for um, for the true ending. However, um, fortunately, uh, you don't actually have to do a lot of the difficult stuff. Um, there are a lot of dev-intended shortcuts uh, that you're going to see May use here to basically avoid half of the difficult stuff, as well as one very dev unintended skip that um, I will get to explain um, uh, very quickly before Path of Pain. I guess I'll start explaining it after Left Atrium. <laughs> yeah, after Left Atrium to go nuts. Yeah, so, um, Left Atrium, we've got... So we have to hit an orb on the left-hand side and an orb on the right-hand side. 
in order to um, reach, in order to unlock the uh, next part of White Palace. Um, so, oh. Yep, I got Poe going up there. <laughs> These nice little squeezes here. Um, right. Ooh. Yeah, that was a little late on the cycle. Yeah, so that corridor there is absolutely the worst thing to learn on the planet. Um, it's the fortunately the only um, cycle-based corridor you have to do in this run, um, in, in, the, in this version of White Palace. Um, and so, here comes the skip. So, um, due to a slight bug, um, if you... Um, I'm just going to shut up for it. Yes, there we go. So, when you shriek, the shriek hitbox lingers for a couple frames after you regain control. Um, by using wings and immediately pogoing right after uh, we regain control, you can actually pogo your own shriek hitbox, which allows you to refresh your wings while still getting the height from the pogo, which allows you to basically triple jump. Um, you can even chain those together infinitely. Um, and here is our here path comes, of pain incentive. Yes. Here is path of pain, a very tricky um, optional added area that is not required uh, as a percentage, um, but is the most rewarding platforming section in the game. Um, okay, nice. Uh, from what this that first room is actually one of the hardest sections. Um, uh, the middle sections are actually kind of reasonable, and then Room of Four just throws it all out of the window and is impossible again. Ooh. Have to wait for this cycle. Oh. Yeah, I'm winged. Whoops. It's amazing. Ow. It's so challenging. <laughs> yeah. But thank you again to everyone yeah. who donated to get this incentive because it is so challenging and it's just so cool to see uh, to see this played out in real time. Don't just it's do awesome. the baby strat. <laughs> Ow. I keep on forgetting I don't have marker pride. Ow. <laughs> Okay, I have forgotten how to pogo dash. Oh, huh? okay. Okay, yeah, that's so a the, little... Um, yeah, the loadout we have for this run is very different from basically any loadout you use for Path of Pain individual level runs. So, um, it, this is a very tricky incentive um, to do in the yeah. middle of a run. <laughs> so, normally we have two nail lengthening charms. So you can kind of just pogo in the same postcode as a buzzsaw and you're going to get your dash back. Um, yeah. We don't have that luxury at all. Yes, so unfortunately you have to be very close to the source to pogo. Right, let's uh, cycle skip this. Yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, that's I love getting the pogo sound, but not the pogo. <laughs> yeah, I love that personally. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Yes, so um, by Pogo to lock in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll let you focus for this. Yep, so Pogoing the saw on the way down, we can uh, skip going around the uh, left-hand side of that section there, which is a very tricky bit of movement, so it's nice we can skip it. That's that made a lot easier nice when you Please heal. <laughs> heal? Like, that looks so scary. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. But I still want three casts, otherwise... Um, yeah. You can't so yes, do the quick after, after this room, uh, you have to fight two King's mobs. Uh, and if you die there, you have to redo the whole thing, include it every single room. So, um, good to be a, take it a little bit safe. 
Let my pico go! <laughs> Would you like some quick donations so you can focus? Would love some. Amazing. So we had $100 from Anonymous who said, Never played Hollow Knight, but love to watch. Here's to hoping the sequel will come sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping. Thanks, Anonymous. We appreciate it. And just filling everyone in on where we're at, we are at $548 out of the 2000 we need for the cat ears and tail. We're almost at the start of the next run, but we're already a quarter of the way there. Let's push it, everybody. I believe in all of you so much. Thanks to everybody who's been getting their donations in so far. We are making great progress, and it all goes to such a great cause in the National Women's Law Center. So thanks so much. So I found out during that cutscene the auto hotkey had crashed. <laughs> I think I figured Which out why you weren't getting so what I used to bind inputs. my nail button, to, like a second <laughs> nail button. For um, certain complex movement, I use two fingers on my jump key. So that would explain so much. <laughs> yeah, so we, we allow one-to-one -one keybinds, um, specifically for things like that, where you have uh, multiple nail or multiple um, jump binds to get a certain, um, make certain pieces of movement slightly easier. Oh my god. This room sucks off the cycle, which is why you see me going out of and into the room again. There we go. Excellent. Lamp. Excellent. And then, uh, quick. Yeah, after doing Path of Pain, now these platforming sections are frankly not that scary. Um, obviously you can still just easily face tank a lot of the sores and spikes and everything else. So you can still lose a lot of time here, but uh, the risk of death is significantly reduced, thankfully. It's also much more about going fast rather than path of pain with that loadout. It's much more about like surviving and not dunking repeatedly like we did. Nice no scruffy there. white palace incident. Excellent. Let's see <laughs> if we can show off a little. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't uh, it, remind me. That, that saves half a time, second. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that Shrogo is a complete not a swag strat. Um, for half a second, you get to risk losing like seven. Probably? I don't know, that's a complete... I, I've pulled that number from nowhere, but feels about right. Um, yeah. It's worth it so for a four-frame window. It's worth it for a four-frame window, obviously. And, uh, yeah. It's so fun. It's... it's... <laughs> so great. Alright, so the White there Palace side of that wasn't too bad. Yep, there we go. So now we're going to, uh, go into the... Um, the last couple of clean up -y bits left over. First is this fountain, which says you need to drop all your Geo into it, but it only costs 3,000, fun fact. Um, so, uh, fortunately, we don't waste all our money. Uh, very good. Um, oh, if you have any donations, um, feel yeah, free. Yeah, of course. So we had $25 from Anonymous who said, Papa Nada, Path of Pain, please. And you got it. <laughs> Thanks so much for donating. We had another $25 Anonymous donation that said, Hollow Knight Poggies. And agreed, it's a wonderful game. And I did just want to remind everybody as well that there are some Hollow Knight prize packs that are only open for today now. So hey, if you want to join in, maybe become a speedrunner of the game, for a $25 minimum donation, you could get yourself in to win the Hollow Knight Collector's Edition, for example. So there you go, $25 get in a nice donation, maybe win a collector's edition, and become a speedrunner. <laughs> it's the perfect cycle. But thanks so much for everyone who's been donating so far. We appreciate it so, so much. All right, so that was a strat called Early Birthplace. Um, so we activate the door, then we go down and activate the um, birthplace, which is where we get Void Heart. 
Um, so that can start opening up. It's a really long animation before we actually have to start waiting for it. And that lifeblood door takes so long to open that we can just do it while that door's opening. But we need to be very careful not to get hit or to hit any of the um, invisible hazard respawn update um, boxes. So it's really easy to mess that up. And if you get hit before the door's done loading, then you get to save quit out because you don't have enough health to um, open the door. So it's a risky strat that we've managed to turn into a safe, consistent strat by having very specific like dash setups and um, ways of aligning ourselves on the fall. Unfortunately, uh, I, I think it used to just be count um, to like 13, which is um, impossible. So it's very good that now we have actual setups for it. But no, you still count for 14. Oh no. Okay, I can't run this category, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you could probably do it so, like, you get there and you kill enough time on the way down that you then only count to, like, one. But I prefer to count to 14 and kind of YOLO's movement a little. Yeah. Now comes the Void Heart climb. Uh, this is... Uh, one. Well, not specifically this one, but uh, doing this room from bottom to top is one of May's favourite... Um, uh, piece uh, movement sections in the game. Uh, in all skills, for example, you go from the bottom left of the room to the top right, and it's just extremely satisfying to um, uh, sort of pogo the spikes and talk, take a slightly unintended route uh, up to the top of the room. Yeah, a couple of unfortunate uh, dunks there. Very out of character. You can tell I've been practicing 107 and not at this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think Abyss Climb has a lot of the um, of the absolutely insane um, individual level movement optimizations, like the um, the nail instas and it, oh, and it's like gotten every ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so it, it the amount that you can breed out of every tiny piece of movement in this game, if you are so inclined, is absolutely insane. Um, and a lot of that tech we simply don't do in full game runs because it is just too exhausting. Um, but um, if you want to have your mind absolutely blown, go look at a Path of Pain individual level run on the Hollow Knight uh, leaderboards. Um, they are just absolutely incredible to watch. Um, the sheer dedication to shaving off actual milliseconds is quite something to witness. Yep, and we've got some last second shopping if we have any more last minute donations. Yeah, of course. I just wanted to fill everybody in that we are still making progress on our cat ears and tail for Catalyde, which will be taking place next run. Time is so short, but let's push it, everybody. We're at $588 out of the 2000 that we need. And there's also the naming incentive that is open where you can choose what you'd like the protagonist's name to be. Right now, Trans Rights is winning with $85, followed by Waffles at $55. $5. So we'll see which one ends up taking the cake. <laughs> In that same vein, we had also had $40 from Sorry8, who says, Trans rights. Thanks so much. So now, after some shopping uh, with some very funny, sh uh, what we call shop optimization, um, by buying this vessel fragment last. Um, you can actually save a little bit of time uh, because of something. I don't even remember why it saves time. All I remember is um, that it, it does. closes the dialogue so you don't have to talk to Sly one extra time. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so it saves like one second unoptimally. It's very funny. All right, and now comes the tricky fight. Uh, NKG, this is one of the trickiest fights you can do, um, but also one of the most entertaining once you get to grips with it. Um, I will uh, calm down on my uh, comms if you want. Is um, no, feel free to talk and okay. I'm gonna just focus. Okay. So, uh, NKG. Um, NKG does double damage on every one of their attacks um, and has a lot of these lingering flames behind a lot of them. 
uh, of said attacks, which makes them very tricky to move around. Um, and also, you can see, very fast, so it's difficult to stay close and uh, continue doing damage. Um, you'll actually see that we're, uh, we're prioritizing more nail hits here. That's because for this balloon phase, we actually want lots of soul, because on this patch in particular, uh, on, in particular, any patch post-1221, um, you can uh, damage uh, NKG during this balloon phase, um, which allows Ow. you to oh, do no lots of damage. Um, NKG does these balloon attacks um, at a consistent uh, e every quarter of their health. So you get three balloons in total. Um, so we just got through second balloon. It's a good way to measure your progress through the fight as well. Um, Not a fan of this health. Yeah. Um, the fire bats are a good opportunity to get a nail art in. Oh, I thought uh, that was a balloon. Okay. Um, more fire balloons. That's a balloon. That's our last balloon. Um, so we're both coming down to the wire here with both, um, both of us on low health. We got a very I'm nice stagger. Two, give us one extra hit. Yep. And that should be pretty safe now. Yeah. Yeah, that stagger was really nice to get um, because it gave me an opportunity to heal where you don't really get any opportunities um, to heal in this fight. Though if you're struggling, uh, quick focus helps a lot. Um, you can quick focus gives heal. you yeah. heals on every attack. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah uh, if, you, if you react fast enough, you can heal on basically every attack and the floor spikes are basically a free heal. Also, if you use Shape of Un, you can heal during the Fire Bats attack, and you will just go underneath the bats. The bats can't get close enough to the ground to actually hit you. But there you are, um, NKG, and a funny early control with that. And now we head to the actual final boss of the run, um, who is going to be much easier, though you still have quite an opportunity to uh, to just die. Um, uh, though THK is a lot safer because um, they are not too difficult and we have Hornet here to help us. Um, midway through the fight, uh, since we've uh, got the Void Heart and proven that we are indeed an, um, strong enough to defeat the Radiance, um, Hornet will actually help us to um, uh, get inside uh, THK's mind and uh, uh, defeat the source of the infection once and for all. Yep, so we'll be nail only on THK because Quick Slash Nail 4 does so much damage with strength as well. Um, and we also want to save soul for Radiance because it flies around and is much harder to hit with our nail. Um, we can basically face tank this whole thing, it dies so quickly. Um, and then Radiance is where we have to actually pay attention. Yes, uh, THK on this version of the game is actually relatively quick, and so in some speedruns is rather difficult, but because of just how much damage we have, um, they're not going to be much of a problem. However, this self-stab attack is um, very irritating. Uh, you are guaranteed one after that scream. Oh my, okay, well you just kill THK before they get a chance to do a second one. Okay. Um, so any damage you do to THK during that attack is only one. So no matter what, how much damage you have, you are doing basically nothing. Um, do you want end time on uh, console I'll call end time on like when icon? it'll actually end. Yeah, okay. I'll icon. just call cool. it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so here is the true final boss of the game. Well, there's another one, but we're not going to go there because that's the Pantheon exclusive. Um, However, Radiance is no slouch herself, herself, herself. Um, she's gone to Ikea, apparently. Um, ooh, uh, yes, so because we're trying to do as much damage as possible, we're just going to try and stay close to Radiance and hope that we don't get hit by any um, uh, unfortunate um, attack patterns. Um, here we want Radiance to stay in the middle and not immediately teleport. Uh, so that's, ooh, not a nice nail spawn, but... Uh, still alright. Oh god. Ooh. Okay. Um, alright, that should be that TP, should be so yes. just play Clive safe. 
Yes, this climb is very scary. Um, <laughs> yes, Radiance fires lasers, and you eventually... And Underplat. Under plat <laughs> you, lost, you lost so much height on the Underplat, I thought you were going to... I was worried. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so yes, time is coming up here um, after the... Um, uh, after the screen fades to black, they uh, will call it. Oh. And that was Hollow Knight, 107% all bosses, no major glitches. Thank you again, Jamie, for comms. And time is... now. Oh. GG's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you again, Jamie. Thank you for our wonderful host. Thank you for everyone having me on. And thank you to everyone who's been very supportive throughout the run, even if you've subjected me to Path of Pain. Um, huge thanks to the Hollow Knight community. Um, don't know where I'd be without you. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks so much, May. Uh, where can we find you? Uh, so I stream on Twitch um, at twitch.tv forward slash insomnia with a zero SR. Um, it's also on my Twitter, which is just insomnia with the zero. Um, and they're probably the two places I'm most active, um, apart from the Hollow Knight Speedrunning Discord, where we all hang out and improve and help new people so if you're looking to run the game um absolutely join the hollow knight speedrunning discord if you're looking to watch more 107 then yeah myself and a few other streamers are running it um so they're your best bets <laughs> <laughs>